we'll, we'll come to order. Uh, thanks to those in the booth doing the broadcasting. Just a reminder, we're being broadcast on the web, so we need to start and stop our time uh, from 8.30 to 12 today. And uh, please remember to turn your mics on and off when you're speaking, not speaking. Uh, hope you all had a comfortable night as it goes. I hope you had an okay hotel room. Um, Welcome to Austin. Hope you maybe even got out and to do something fun last night. That would be nice. Have some barbecue. Um, I will turn it over now to our co-chairs uh, to uh, talk about what we did last night. I very much appreciate. I know you had a lot to do last night and a lot to think about. And I appreciate uh, the many of you who could take the time to think through this and make some course selections. You'll see from the handout I gave you. Um, what the tallies were on these things. I'll put it up online for those. Uh, I'll put it up on the screen so those can see it online in a moment. Um, and perhaps that'll give us a basis for starting some discussion, which uh, will be led by our two co-chairs. Uh, many thanks again to Kevin and Michael for agreeing to help us today. Woot. All right. Um, so we all have, we have the handout, right? Have you had a chance to kind of dig through that? Um, I think, you know, Kevin and I talked briefly about this, and I think going forward today, let's hammer out the general one first, and then once we get that set, look at it and say, okay, what would we take out of this to create and put in to be a tech design, and what would we take out of it and put in to be the performance tracked? and then you know, keep going down the road if we uh, feel we still need the teaching one or uh, any others at that point. Does that sound cool? Yeah? Um, so looking at this, it looks like, uh, I'm, our guess is that 18 were turned in, since 18 is the high number. Um, and we'll just start at the top of the page and kind of work down. Does that sound cool? How about how about if we start with the highest the number? Highest of number. Votes? All right, great. Yeah. Acting one, 1351, acting one. Are we in agreement that that should be in the the BA general field of studies? Yeah. Looking around. Yeah. Perfect. Hey, look at that. Three minutes in, and we're in consensus on. Practicum one would be the next one. Yeah, practicum uh, one. I guess the conversation could be how many semesters of practicum do we feel are the best suited in this 22-hour um, field of study? Four, three, two, or one? Yeah. yeah. Just, I mean, trying to get up to 22. I, maybe others had this experience in trying to create a 22-credit FOS. Uh, without all four of the practicum, I found it virtually impossible. Mm -hmm. I mean, whether we agree that all four should be in there or not, just getting to 22 seemed to require all four practicum. Yeah. Yes, Allison. While we're discussing the general, I will just say in, in agreement with what you just said about adding all four practicums and trying to create what looked like a technical track, it's the same as the general track. By the time I piece together. I couldn't come up with 22 technical right. track classes that that we offer that are on this list. Sure. So by the time I submitted my list, the general track and the tech track look the same. Right. Unless we add add classes, yes. I think is the, yeah. Because I know when I submitted mine, I created new classes to make it work. Mm -hmm. The same, same problem though, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. We don't offer practicum, um, so instead we offer academic cooperative to our students for an in-depth um, learning experience, so we would have a problem. Well, I think everybody, community yeah. colleges and four-year schools, may have to adjust some of their offerings okay. to fit this field of study. That's, as I've been watching other videos of other fields of studies and things like that, every department who's had a field of study, there have been places who have had to make adjustments in order to fit this statewide mandate of a field of study. Dan. And one thing you have to watch out for when you repeat classes, the federal government only pays for two classes, two times. So if, if we don't do all four practicums, you can't repeat a practicum more than once or financial aid kicks out. So well, is like the practicum would be the same problem. If you repeat it three times, that third time, 
the students don't get financial aid for it. Is that the case for uh, since the, the courses have different That's numbers? how come they have the 1,000s and 2,000s. So even though they can sign up for 1120, then 1121, then 2120, 2121, those aren't considered four. Those are not the same class. They're four different numbers. Well, that's so what the, I'm saying. Yeah. Does, does that mean if a student takes all four of those, then they can? They could repeat them one time <clears throat> without the federal government getting involved. But well, if why they would go a student repeat a for repeat one without just taking to pad their hours to be full time. Uh, I don't think anybody just, should. Oh, I see. But that's just that's the reason that I know that in music they added all those sophomore level classes was simply to get around the fact that they're going to take band and it's going to be in the same room with all four years. But they have to have four different numbers just to be able to do it without running afoul of financial aid. You don't, you don't offer practicum at all, like not even one section of it? No, we don't offer practicum. We have a very small department, and so I'm wondering if the academic cooperative three hours could be a substitution. I don't know. I'd like to offer that for consideration. So that would be like a, a menu choice. You could take this, 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 or you could take to have an option. this. Yeah. I would just like to ask my colleague, um, Yesenia, do you guys not do um, any productions? No, we do productions, but most of them are volunteer basis. So we, we do, don't, we do yeah. the same thing, and only the majors have to enroll in the practicum um, so that anyone can be involved in the production, but the majors would then get credit hours, which is how we don't have to, like, it's just a solution, perhaps, for what you're doing, because if you're already doing the productions, you have the students doing the jobs that would be in a practicum. Mm -hmm. It would just be adding those on for the students who needed those hours of credit. The volunteers would still be volunteers. I think for us is the value of the three-hour course for the students. Right. So for the students and for your administration. Sure. In course load. Yes. Some of us have administration that have learn to support our one hour classes and r see how much work it actually is and count that towards our course loads and some administrations don't support that. So that's kind of where we're at, which is why I'm wondering if there's a, con a possible flexibility or consideration for substitution. Would, would y'all teaching the two hour version of it and repeat it for credit work? Because that would be four, four hours. Possibly. I know right now we're, it's a three-hour course. Right. Yeah, Karen? I just wanted to add that practicum is like our lab. So um, our administration is very open to it because I'm like, well, they're taking A&P and they've got to take a one-hour lab, which which is exactly what practicum is. It's it's a lab-type class with practical hand, hands-on experience. So that's how my administration views it. How, how many times do they take that co-op class in your degree? Um, they take it towards the uh, end of their two-year program. But so they, they take it just once. once. Mm -hmm. Okay. I think I think the thought behind four hours, if I'm understanding it, is they if you teach practicum, they're taking it every semester that they are there, right? Every fall, fall, spring, both semesters. So, a, would you be open to a two, like to the four hours of practicum or academic co-op, the two-hour version? take it twice. I think that would be a good compromise. Okay. Everybody else cool with that? Uh, all right. That's yeah. the key. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think then, what do you think next, Kevin? Stagecraft, Stagecraft one? Stagecraft next, yep. Well, sorry. Can, can we re uh, repeat for clarity where we are on the practicum stand? And what your so four, four, so practicum one through four, or 2289 twice, taking it twice. The 2289 is the two hour co op. We can do that, right? Uh, that's really unusual. Um, I'll have to check and confirm with the folks upstairs or that, that putting it, taking a course twice in the field of study. 
that's going to really make the what, all right, what that's could, going to make the the bookkeeping really you. difficult could because we, when a, see because when a course is taken for the field of study it's indicated as a field of study course gotcha how to indicate that a student has taken it twice and to make sure registrars know that it must be taken twice that's going to be i got to figure it out we create we create 2288 academic co-op one and 2289 academic co-op two because uh, we have four practicums, why can't we have two different academic co-ops in the two? They have different system? course descriptions. Are you doing different things in the two academic co-ops? I mean, what are the course? Somebody pull up the thing for practicum. What does it say for one through four? Stagecraft one and two have the same description. Practicum has the same descriptions. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So why couldn't we? Uh, well. Hmm. Okay, I, we'll have to see. I um, have to bring in the big guns on that. Uh, if to, to put in a new course in the ACGM with exactly the same description as an existing course in the ACGM is going to be a hard sell. Uh, I think we're going to have to, we would have to be able to explain why and how that's going to work. Sure. Uh, instead of 2288, it is 1289. Yeah. So then we have a lower sure. level, a freshman academic cooperative, and then a sophomore, and we put in the word advanced, like we did in Stagecraft 2, the exact same description with the word advanced sprinkled in. Uh, maybe at beginning an intermediary, sure. or intermediate, leaving advanced for... Oh, sure, 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 yeah. But, um, yeah, it's not advanced in the description, I mean, in the title. Um, I don't remember exactly what they what they used. It wasn't advanced, but whatever they used in Stagecraft Two. Continued study. Continued study. Right. study. So if, Thank you. So if we made twelve eighty nine beginning academic cooperative, and then or whatever eleven eighty nine. I'm sorry. No, it's got to be twelve because it's two hours. Yeah, and then 2289 exists, so we don't have to add it. Yes, ma'am. I don't want to stir a kettle of fish, but then does that, if it's the four hours and it's the either or, does that, would that also mean that a student could take 1120, 1121, and 1289? I would think so. Okay. So as long as that section ends up four hours. Right. We would yeah. be okay. So okay. My, my guess is that, I mean, how many of how many of you guys teach academic co-op in your theater besides so? I, I teach it in order to help my design students have an extra, like they may spend, they take the three hour academic co-op in order like they're gonna concentrate on lighting that entire semester and they have a project that they do. So how would you handle what she just said if um, we went this route? I probably would not um, advise them to do that. I would have them take the four one-hour practicums, and then if they wanted to do a very specific sort of co-op, that would be an elective class gotcha. for them. So, I, I mean, I think we can word it. I got gotcha. you. I think we can word it. Four hours. You have to do these four, or you have to do two and two. Yeah. But you don't have to put both courses in, or all courses in your catalog either. I mean, yeah, because you're not not every school is going to be able to teach every. Yeah, I mean, you can have just the practicums or just the co-ops, or a combo. You're going to check with the the big guns. All right, he's going to check with the big guns. So, so for now, let's just let's go with that route and see what what else happens. So that gives us seven, 14 minutes, and we've got two agreements. You guys rock today. Um, looks like probably Stagecraft One would be the next. Any thoughts or comments on it being included? Yes. Yes, Richard. Have we decided what Stagecraft One is? <laughs> um, well, because I mean, based on those, based on on what's written. I've got no idea. If we decide that Stagecraft One is scenery construction, scene painting, props and rigging, or some combination of those things, and Stagecraft Two is lighting and or sound or something like that, 
then I know what I'm voting on. But as it is now, I've got no idea. Yeah, I mean, I, um, in mine, I, I suggested to do similar to the way SFA is structured. Um, uh, and I would like to see Stagecraft One become purely scenery and then add a, and then actually change its name to Intro to Scenic Technologies um, and add a new course that is Intro to Lighting Technologies. Um, and I went through uh, all of y'all's uh, catalogs and uh, people who already have a Lighting Technologies class are Angelo State, Midwestern, SFA, Sam Houston, Texas Southern, UH, UNT, uh, UT Rio Grande, and West Texas. Um, now, Midwestern, it's an upper level, um, which is interesting. So that might actually be a lighting design class, but I think they had a separate lighting design class. So that means that like Corpus Christi and Commerce and Tarleton and Texas State, um, are teaching lighting together with stagecraft. So it, in the state, we're sort of split, right? Yeah, until you get to lighting design. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, the lighting designs are totally yeah. separate. Yeah. yeah, and we don't offer a stagecraft too. Right. Because stagecraft two is just as generic as stagecraft one. I know, I've... I've taught Stagecraft II as a options class. It's been scene painting, it's been a drafting and drawing class, it's been an intro to design class, because all of that falls under this, the description of Stagecraft II. And I think for what we're doing in the field of study to try to make the smoothest transition to a university for the, for the small pool of transfer students that we're talking about compared to native students, then I think that we need to do what Richard is suggesting and really nail those down. The other possibility would be to say, to do the, to do the menu and say, Stagecraft 1, Stagecraft 2, intro to costume, choose 2. Right, and, but still decide what Stagecraft 1 is. That would, that would, be, really, that would be really useful, it, especially if someone, for, for that student who does not complete the field of study at the, at the two-year college level, it would be really helpful for us to know what technical skills they have developed, what, what do they know, what do they not know, what do they, what do they need to, to be brought up to speed in, right. do they need a lighting course, have they already really had a lighting course, although it's called Stagecraft Two, whatever. Right. Karen? Well, um, to speak to what Richard says, we, I think we all know that the uh, learning outcomes are vague, so maybe we, uh, this, this could be for a, a separate uh, meeting, but perhaps we go ahead and redo the learning outcomes, that number one, how to work safely, how to use power tool, you know, I mean, that's, that's what Stagecraft One is. Kids come in the first time they learn they have to work safely, you know, if, if that would help to know what Stagecraft One is. Because, I mean, I have kids walk in, they've never touched a power saw, they've never touched a drill, they don't know to put on goggles or wear closed-toed shoes, so. All right, so let me ask you this. How many stagecrafts, regardless of what the description is, it could be costume, lighting, sound, scenic, should be in the general field of study? Six hours, three hours? I guess you could lump, if we had an intro to design, you could count that in that somewhere. So. Dan saying two classes, so six, two. Is that a is that a consensus? I'm just kind of looking around. Two classes. Three um, How many how many lower level technical classes should be in the field of study? And we can figure out what those should be if it's a menu or or what in the general field of study. I see a lot of people saying two, so six hours. Is that Andrew? What do you? Well, I think it should be Stagecraft One. It should be Intro to Costume, and they should take Makeup, which is considered kind of a technical track class for generalist study. Other other feelings on how are we about a menu of choices there? 
opens it up. I know like we can't teach intro to costuming because I don't know how to sew. So. Uh, <laughs> for general, for general, I was trying to be as general as possible. Hit, hit your butt. Oh. Uh, for general, I had a uh, stagecraft one, makeup, costume, acting one, two, and then the practicums and intro to theater. So that was as general as I could make it. Yeah. Um, I know like getting a new class in the ACGM is a, is a pain and all of that, but I'm just wondering if we really want to, if this is the track that is the truly general, we need to be able to, and based on some of our discussion yesterday, this is, would really be the track that those wanting to eventually become theater teachers would take, that perhaps we're missing, like this would be the opportunity to do something like add an intro to technical theater or th theater technology or something like that, because it seems to me that those general folks need, you know, one of everything. And right now they're missing that one of everything. Um, you know, so perhaps this is the time that, that we take advantage of it and to be completely selfish, the more of those kind of technical programs we put in, um, the more leverage I have with our administration, which means the better off our, my students are and the more easily they may be able to feed into programs that they haven't been able to feed into before. I, I have a question as well with the general track. Um, I'm also I'm looking down the list at some of the ones that got lower numbers, and I'm looking specifically at the the two history sequence ones, and those of us who indicated that we thought a script analysis course belongs somewhere here. If we're talking about the general track, these are the only places where there's learning outcomes where they're writing, and I think that that's important if they're going on to educational fields or for a general degree. If they're headed towards a BA, they should have some written communication learning outcomes in their first two years. Um, so I feel strongly that one of these three classes needs to be in the general track, and that might be at the expense of some of the technical sure. courses. So maybe six hours of something performance, six hours of something technical, and six hours of something academic, and four hours of application. I like that a lot. Yeah. Except, except say writing and not academic, because they're all academic, right? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, so that would re possibly require a script analysis addition, which I'm, I know I'm in favor of something like that. Um, yes. Trauma thirteen ten has written responses required. Mm -hmm. Intro. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah so I think there. I think there could be a menu for all of those, and then each college would be able to offer which parts of that menu that they could offer um, and then each university who received someone who had that like rich was saying would would have uh, okay well they've had scenery and lighting but they haven't had costumes well you're gonna be a teacher we need to fill that hole somehow unfortunately it can't be with a lower level class unless an advisor tells them you should take this as a lower level elective. Suggestions are a wonderful thing. <laughs> but I mean, one of the things that, that we've just been talking about in terms of the academic side, I mean, we can, I'm certainly behind the idea of a script analysis class. I think that's, to me, that's, that is the most important course across the board, because uh, you can't do if you don't know how to read a play, you can't be an actor, you can't be a director, you can't be a designer, you sure as hell can't be a dramaturg. Um, so that needs to be a foundational course. We need to understand on the theater history side that many if not most four-year colleges put theater history at the upper division. And speaking as someone who teaches theater history at a four-year school, I am not going to accept a 200 level class. Uh, it just isn't gonna happen. I've seen too many students who have taken theater history at, uh, at a, a junior college or, or indeed at, at another four year college who just flounder at the level that, that I'm teaching the class. And, and part of our mission is to prepare a wide variety of students for a wide variety of, of potential jobs, including 
maybe sitting in this room someday, um, including uh, going on to graduate school on the academic side. Um, and and certainly, certainly the fact that our students have had um, three upper division courses on the academic side minimum uh, helps get them ready to, to go on to an MA-PhD program, for example. Yeah, I, I think, you know, just the names of History Theater 1 and 2 on the lower level are, are problematic. Because, I mean, I deal with the same thing with students coming in having taken it. Why do I now have to take it out of the 4,000s? I mean, but I'm open to the idea of a course similar to that, maybe with a different name. Like we rename those as, I don't know what we'd rename them. But, but if we're saying six hours of acting, six hours of stagecraft, six hours of, of a analysis writing, and then four hours of practicum, so why, why don't we just do this? Here, you just create some menus. So you have to take acting one and acting two or voice for the theater or movement, something like that. On this, the tech side, you say you have to take stagecraft one or stagecraft two or costume or an intro to design, pick two. And then you take your script analysis or 2361 or 2362, pick two. And then you take your practicums. I mean, can we, I mean, it can be that basic, All right? I mean, it's, I think we're hitting kind of all around the same thing. You, yes, and then you, and then you. I wonder if we might do six performance, six technical, and then tell them what to take with introduction to theater and script analysis, leaving the history of theater for the upper divisions um, the four-year institutions and keeping the performance and technical um, flexible. Karen and then I, I was just going to pretty much say the same thing. I believe that we should do script analysis, which means creating a new class because that's the basis of it, and then the intro to theater, which we should call theater appreciation, because that helps fills in with non-majors because advisors think it's just simply for theater majors, and that tends to be a more broader class to introduce people into theater. I would also suggest um, introduction to cinema or have that be right part there. of the menu options as well. Yeah, I would, I would agree with that. For academic. Mm -hmm. So on that, oh, I'm sorry, yes, and then I want to I want to. If we include question. the intro class too, that will also fulfill their fine arts core, which would allow us to keep this 60 degree, I mean a 60 hour degree that would really make my administration happy because the intro will fill our core, but it's the only one that will. You'd still be one hour over, if, even yeah. with the intro. Yeah. You'd be at 61. Yeah. Yes, okay. Uh, yeah, but we won't be that far off, so. Um, I, uh, first is a question. So at UT Austin, the theater history is a lower division because we also expect them to take um, a topics level history course so that they have both, the ex both a kind of training and then a, a more, um, uh, focused uh, upper division experience. So if theater history isn't in the FOS and they come to UT and we can't say they have to take lower division courses, that would mean that transfer students get no theater history? Is that, my, is that interpretation correct? Okay. And I think it would be one of the men menu choices there is what I just threw out to you all. Yeah. And, and then the second question is, um, and I raised this yesterday, the introduction to theater as described here is in no way reflects what we do. Um, and in fact, at UT, the majors intro and the non-majors intro that they can elect to, to fulfill a VAPA requirement are radically different classes. And an intro class is a pre-professionalization class where we cover things like arts infrastructure, policy, um, um, pitching, it's a writing course, et cetera. So if, if this intro is included, right, then again, our student, the transfer students would, have, would not have that, that knowledge base, right? So, I guess this is my basic problem with the field of study. What's the point of transferring to a school if you aren't going to be 
required to take advantages of its unique curricular offerings? It, it might be that your BA is similar to the BFAs in that it's, it's the outlier. I mean, from the things you've been describing and what I looked at online, it, like, it seems like there are a lot of things that y'all are doing in a BA that, that a, a chunk of us aren't doing in our BA. And I don't know if we can craft a field of study that will allow for that uniqueness plus what a majority of the rest of us are doing, I, I mean, or a chunk, I can't say majority because I'm not sure. Thank you, Michael. I, I would just say that's the problem with the field of study, right? It begins to move curriculum out of the hands of faculty and into the hands of a large bureaucratic organization. I mean, we're trying, what we're trying to do at UT Austin, and I assume all of you are doing some version of this with your populations and, and your faculty, is reflect what we're learning, constantly learning about the field in order to invest at every level in student preparation. And, and I don't think this is unique to UT Austin at all. I'm, I'm assuming that all of us, um, that this is one of our core beliefs and missions is to prepare our students as well as we possibly can. And asking schools to take courses or requiring them, right, to take every course no matter what, even if it is not equivalent to what is at their institution is deeply troubling to me. Um, and I, I don't know, I don't know how to, I don't know what to do because I want to make common cause with my colleagues here uh, very much and it's very clear as I listen to the comments that all of your students are incredibly lucky, that we're lucky in the state of Texas to have such invested educators. Um, but, so I don't know, I'm stuck, but I don't mean to hold us up with my stuckness, but um, thank you. Sorry. Uh, maybe Alan, it, it, uh, just refresh us on the field of study. If if we create a field of study that, let's say, UT Austin cannot use, is that going to be a detriment to them, or can they say we're not, we don't do that? Uh, no, we've come across that with UT in the past, where UT. Uh, has just announced they're just not going to do the field of study and this is coming from some individual faculty members not the administrators the administrators are aware that this is state law they don't have a choice it's the law it's not a policy it's law that receiving institutions have to accept and apply towards the degree program the field of study which must be substituted for that institution's lower division requirements um, so no UT wouldn't have a choice uh, but keep in mind that this does not affect your native students and it doesn't affect those students who come in with an incomplete field of study we're talking probably about a pretty small number of students who are your transfer students and of those the transfer students who've completed the entire field of study so we don't want to come across as as we're, we're ripping apart your entire lower division curriculum or your entire degree program. This is just so that students can transfer with confidence knowing that they can, that their package will go just like the core curriculum to any institution in the state. Um, so, I, you know, I don't know what to tell you. It's, it's a difficult, uh, difficult decision for some institutions how they're going to map courses to the field of study, and I think uh, I'm very impressed with the way you all seem to accept the significance of the decision here, that we want to make sure that the field of study is not too small and not too big. Uh, uh, I like the way you're considering very carefully all of the, all the requirements. Um, keep in mind, if you're talking about creating a new course for the ACGM or if you want to require a course that is not very often taught. I keep putting up on the screen, and I hope it's sinking into you, that that uh, Excel sheet that shows you how often a course is taught at universities and colleges. I can put it up again, or I send it to you in your package. Uh, if you select a course for the AC, for the field of study that is not offered at very many colleges and not accepted towards the degree program at very many universities. That's okay if you feel like you need to do that, but just be aware that you're creating a big wave here. You're gonna to have to, there will be many universities across the state who are gonna to have to start accepting a course that they've never taught before. 
uh, or, you know, same thing with colleges. If only a handful of colleges are even teaching a course, um, then that's okay. But um, it's going to be difficult to staff that course, difficult to maybe find the enrollments for it. But, uh, but that's something to, you know, keep in mind uh, when you're making these, these decisions. Be aware that universities like UT Austin and many other universities across the state uh, it creates an enormous impact if your field of study is significantly different from what they're already doing. I just wanted to mention that UTs is not the only outlier in terms of the BA. Uh, our BA carries a minor, which is 18 hours, and when you figure in everything else, the field of study at 22 hours not only wipes out all of the lower division, we, have to, we will have to apply a, uh, an upper division elective simply to meet that mandate. So it, it, it's, it's not just UT that has the issue. Uh, also, uh, I do want to point out that we have a major transfer population and this will have a major impact on us. Okay. Um, so, if it seems we're in a consensus on six acting, six design tech, six hours in a writing analysis type course, and four in practicum, I mean, are we still all kind of sitting on that? Yes, maybe. Um, yeah, because I'm not, I'm not sure how to answer your concern, Charlotte. Um, I, yeah. Um, yes. I mean, it's, I mean, we're all definitely facing the same issue here. I mean, many of our programs, I mean, this FOF is, FOS is coming. Uh, I mean, it's a little bit like the shift to the 120 credit hour uh, degree, whatever it was, 18, 20 years ago. Um, and all of us had to do a whole bunch <laughs> to our curriculum to make it fit in, and all of us hoped we were going to be able to get exemptions to make it 124 or 126, and virtually all of us lost that fight and found a way to make it 120. It does seem, with the idea of 666 six, six and the four practicum, <laughs> for those of us who believe in numerology, <laughs> um, we may be, I mean, it, it, keeping the very general menu option may give as much flexibility and adaptability as possible, and it seems trying to at least maintain maximum adaptability might be our strongest play at this point. Whether we're even looking at three separate FOS this, at, at, at this junction, or if we're just looking at the menu options, and it, it I, I don't know, it just seems maximizing adaptability may be our strongest play right now. Charlotte. Alan, could you speak to the SACS letter? Um, many of you around here may know that the, our accrediting board sent a letter to the head of the, of, <coughs> excuse me, uh, to the head of um, uh, the higher ed coordinating board saying that um, fields of study may threaten our accreditation. Could you talk a little bit about how the coordinating board is responding to that letter? From SACS about threatening accreditation. For what, for a university or a program or what? Universities in the state. If you've not seen the letter, I have it, I can email it to you. Uh, yeah, that's above my pay grade. That, that letter went to the commissioner, I'm sure. Uh, I can see if our assistant commissioner can come down uh, later this morning and address that and see what's going on. Uh, I know that there has been some misunderstanding, as I said yesterday, about field of study and the fact that it's law uh, and uh, the fact that, it, that these courses must be accepted for, for, uh, and applied to degree programs. In response to that, and I believe partially also in response to the Sachs letter, 
I believe. Uh, the coordinating board has been putting together an implementation guide. It's it's almost finished. It's it's being routed and edited now here at the coordinating board. When it's finished, it will go out soon and be mailed to all university presidents, and CAOs, and CIOs, and coordinating board liaisons, who we hope will forward it to deans and department chairs. Um, that gives some specific suggestions about how actually to make the field of study work on campus. There's a section for upper administration. There's a section for deans and department chairs. There's a section for faculty and advisors. And hopefully that will, uh, that will clear up some of the issues. So I know that's part of a response. Uh, but I'll see if I can get some clarification on that before the morning's out. Thank you. Uh, so let's get back to um, where we are now, and it may turn out that uh, fields of study all get taken away in the next legislature. Um, but this is th this is where we are now, um, and so uh, we're pretty satisfied in the four hours of application. So if we can focus on the six hours of technical, of the the menu, um, and um, uh, so I think first in Stagecraft 1, if we're going to talk about Stagecraft 1 and Stagecraft 2, we might need to come to a, an agreement, a motion, a vote um, to request to the ACGM that Stagecraft 1 and Stagecraft 2 get separated and delineated in their descriptions as to what they focus on. Um, so, Richard, I would be glad to entertain a motion that says that. <laughs> uh, so, I would move that uh, we request from the appropriate authorities uh, clarification of the uh, course content uh, in Stagecraft 1 and Stagecraft 2 so that they are delineated from each other and clear to outside readers. It's not really good phrasing, but it'll have to do. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. So I have a, a motion in a second. We'll have discussion. And I think part of some of our charge is to, is to, to I think we can handle that here if I'm, if I read the charter right, we can, we, because if we create new classes, we have to create learning outcomes and um, that kind of stuff. So I think that might be something that we can recommend and send up the chain to whoever that is. Yes, Karen? I volunteer to help with doing the learning outcomes and writing up curriculum that I'm happy to share with everybody. And I will draw from NAST and I will draw from other universities and have something that's definite that we can, and not so vague. Sure. In the next 17 minutes. No, I'm just kidding. No, I think, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Alan's working on an email, but um, uh, from what I've saw in other fields of study, that's a different committee, right? The Learning Outcomes Committee. We would just recommend a change in class and then it goes yes, to a to different be, committee. To, to be clear, when I, and to be specific, when I say we can create a new course for the field of study, that's kind of shorthand. It's a little more complicated than that, of course. Uh, if what we what we would do is recommend a new course to a separate committee that is called of drama faculty from across the state, half from community colleges, half from universities. Typically, it's 12 members, not not 22 or 24 like this committee. Uh, and they are given the assignment of looking at the syllabus for every drama course taught at every institution around the state. It's a big job, right? They, it takes them weeks and weeks to go through all these files. What they do is they look carefully at what's already being done, what the course descriptions are in courses that are already being offered, what the learning objectives already are, and then they come to the table to make a compromise between what is already being done and what should be and needs to be done. And that committee, uh, if we recommend the creation of a new class, what they will do is they will be the ones to wordsmith the exact description and definition of that class. They'll wordsmith the exact learning objectives of that class. And then that, in turn, goes on to the full ACGM committee, which has to, to accept it or reject it. Then that goes to the cause committee, and then their re 
recommendation goes on to the full board. So there are several steps between us just poof creating a new ACGM course and it being effective, you know, next semester. It's a little more complicated than that. So we don't have to worry about the exact title, course number, course description or anything. But what we would need to do is give the committee some clear direction on the rationale, the purpose for the class, uh, the justification of it, and some idea, a good idea of what we want the course content to be. Uh, and that would be very helpful for them as they, as they put that together. Alan, was that the, um, the Learning Outcomes Committee? Yes, it's called the Learning Outcomes Committee. Uh, we have uh, a few people here who've already served on one. Uh, Dr. Galper, were you? Oh, was Mc McCloskey was on the Learning Objectives Committee. Perhaps you could be in a better position to state what the committee does and how they did it. Again, this is on the common course numbering, um, so much as the learning outcomes whenever we decided, uh, which is why some of these um, descriptions are so vague because we couldn't come to a consensus on what exactly should be covered whenever we were doing common course numbering. Um, I agree with you that now that we're going to make it uh, unilateral that we should have very specific outcomes. But yeah, basically you, you sit down, everybody compares syllabi and say give me a little bit of this, a little bit of that, and uh, you come out with uh, the student learning outcomes for it. Does that sound about what we did? Yeah. So if we were to go down this road um, with the motion on the floor, would we, would we be saying that Stagecraft 1 is, is more scenic oriented and Stagecraft 2 is more lighting oriented? Is that what, is that what people would, would want it to be? Or S Stagecraft 1 is scenic and Stagecraft 2 is other? Yeah? I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm looking for, I know how I would want it, but I'm looking to see what y'all would, how would y'all want it worded? Well, I would think it might be uh, theater technologies. That way we can introduce them to lighting, sound, projection, uh, new conventions that are coming up and, le and learning. And that way they can get some basic lighting perhaps and get that, but maybe theater technologies would become stagecraft two. So stagecraft one is scenic and safe. Scenic and basic, basic use of power tools, safety. So scenic two would be everything else and then you have intro to costume being a, a third field. Yes, Melissa. I just have a question for your two, my two year colleagues. Is there anyone teaching stagecraft now that cannot do what we're talking about in stagecraft one that teaches it differently? You can't, you don't have a shop full of power tools and so what do we do for these folks? That's my biggest concern. I mean, we do, but not everybody does. Not my colleagues in my district don't. Um, a suggestion uh, for Stagecraft One might be an orientation to production facilities, equipment, and materials, um, or an introduction to all areas of theater craft, technology, and production. Uh, Stagecraft Two could maybe go with. An overview of an overview of and hands-on training and advanced production techniques. Kind of where kind of where it's where worded now, yeah. right? I mean, it's still. It's just not everybody's not everybody's um, going to be teaching the same. I mean, stagecraft too. We get into metalworking, we get into rigging, automation practices, all kinds of things. I mean, it may. It, it may be that we need to keep it as the vague to allow flexibility at the at the lower at the lower at the two-year schools. Yeah, Bill. I think you've heard why the committee did this. Yeah, because yeah, nobody can agree on what those would be exactly. And, and so it sounds like, if, if Richard, if I'm hearing your concern right, a student transferring in with two semesters of stagecraft to SFA, you're concerned that. Stagecraft one may may or may not be scenic construction. Stagecraft two may or may not be lighting, and that would be a detriment to them matriculating through your design courses. Is that the concern? I, I think that's yeah. I think that's a fair summary. Um, and this would and we have, for example, an upper division course in design for the stage, which requires what we call stagecraft, what we call lighting, and. Um, and costume technology as prerequisites for that class. So 
if you get to a design for the stage class and you have not had something to do with scenery reconstruction, or if you have not had something to do with lighting or you know however however we however we spin that you're going to be at a disadvantage and the same is going to be true for for the directing class for which those courses are also prerequisite sure but yeah i i understand yes i understand thank you if if we go with a menu of options let's say stagecraft let's say they're there's six hours they're picking two stagecraft one stagecraft two costume intro to costume if we you know we bantered around an intro to design on a lower level yesterday would the the same disadvantage would exist if they picked the of wrong course. two of those and, and this goes back to this goes back to the whole problem with the idea of a field of study sure. that okay. uh that that there this is unquestionably an incursion into what has always been the domain of faculty who I would suggest ever so humbly know more about how to do a theater curriculum than legislators do. <laughs> okay, so we have a motion on the floor. Um, is there any more discussion on this? The motion was to, to rewrite Stagecraft 1 and Stagecraft 2 descriptions to be more specific. I believe that's what the motion was, yes? All right, the question's been called, so uh, we're clear what we're voting for. So if we vote yes, you're voting to rewrite Stagecraft 1 and Stagecraft 2. If you vote no, you're voting to leave it the same. And if you abstain, you abstain. So all in favor, say uh, raise your hand. Sure. Um, so the motion was to, to rewrite the descriptions of Stagecraft 1 and Stagecraft 2 to be more specific. More specific to all colleges. Yes. Right. Yes. Okay, so let's, let's have the, the yes votes again. I'm sorry, I stopped counting. So if you are in favor, raise your hand. Fourteen. I count fourteen. Uh, opposed. Seven. So that's seven. Is that right? Uh, abstaining. One. All right. So the eyes have it. So. All right. Uh, so in the six, uh, the menu of two courses of the technical area in the general field of study, we're looking at Stagecraft 1 with somewhat more specificity as to what is taught in Stagecraft 1, Stagecraft 2 with more specificity, Intro to Costumes, yes, um, and uh, Something that we've talked about uh, earlier is an intro to design class uh, or a fundamentals of design class, which many universities have um, in lower level and is also often a prerequisite to design classes that are offered um, at the lower level so that they can take design classes beginning their junior year. Well, let's, uh, yeah, let's talk about makeup in a second, um, just because we're talking about intro to design right now. Um, so that would be a new class, another new class um, that could be offered, could not be offered, um, could be taken, could not be taken. And again, we're just talking about the general one here. Um, if we get to a design tech one, then we could make more of these required and fewer of these optional. Well, so to, so to be clear, you're talking about creating a new ACGM course in intro to design, but not requiring it in the field of study, just making it one of an option? Yes. At this point, uh, yeah. We'll see. Sure. Yeah. All of this is we'll see. <laughs> C. 
seems if we're going to get into the can of worms that is creating a new required course, we're probably, and we're only offering the recommendation because the charge of the committee doesn't allow us to actually create that. It's just simply to recommend to move on to, is that cor correct, Alan? Well, I can uh, thankfully give you a definitive answer to questions like this by introducing my colleague, Rebecca Leslie, who just walked in. Uh, she uh, is the person who is in charge of the learning objectives committees. Uh, who would be like would be called for drama to put together things like this and can speak much more conclusively about issues about how things might or might not work for new ACGM courses. Uh, Rebecca, to summarize, a couple of things have come up here. Uh, one of which uh, is to create a new academic cooperative class, uh, academic cooperative one, academic cooperative two so that students could be required to take academic cooperative twice. Either that or take this existing academic cooperative course and put it in the field of study so a student has to take it twice, which I think might be kind of problematic for the mechanics of how field of study works. Another question that's come up is creating a new course, an introduction to design, but making it one of several options in a menu available for a field of study, not absolutely required that everybody take it for the field of study. Uh, there's also been talk of creating uh, new courses in script analysis, um, also for the field of study later on. If you, if you could speak to some of those issues or the process of getting a new course in the ACGM and the pros and cons of, of that approach. That microphone wasn't working earlier. I hope it's working now. If it's not, you can come take my seat. Do you want to just sit up here? Oh, right. We have, uh, uh, yeah, Matthew's been hiding back there. There's a microphone up here if you like. If you would. Thank you. Experience or are meant to be, um, so it would. Um, and the way it's written now, you're you're only to have one course. You either have a two-hour course or a three-hour course. And um, this does involve students going off campus in a non-college uh, setting and getting work experience. Um, so it, wouldn't, it would be under the supervision of an organization or agency other than the college. Um, so it's kind of, and it's very student driven. It's meant to be very student driven. No two cooperatives are supposed to look alike. They're customized to the student. And this involves a lot of work for the professor because you're going to be having to monitor. You're not teaching. They're supposed to be learning hands-on. But you're going to have to monitor and then assess, have some way to assess their learning. So there are some challenges with that. I don't know that that fits what you're looking for. It may be a great possibility um, for this. I don't know. And it may depend on the location of the school, how many opportunities students would have to participate in a non-college um, venue to get that kind of experience. So those are some things to consider. Um, the social work group did develop learning outcomes for a cooperative. Turn it on. OK. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, so, um, but, but they, they already have that kind of embedded in their university curriculum where uh, stu beginning students in social work go to some kind of voluntary, uh, volunteer um, 
social crisis clinic or there you know they they had a lot of venues for their students to go to and just get exposure to uh, some of the work that social workers do um, and, and they built the learning outcomes for that one and that would be a possibility if you wanted to do that but the cooperative is not a college practicum which kind of surprised me that you would be interested in this since you do have practicum courses and I wanted to point out that the other courses in here um, like the you have the theater practicums where those would be on campus productions students would be involved in in any kind of way that you uh, could get them in there then there's stagecraft and it has 96 contact hours so you're holding a 48 hour per week lecture you still have a bunch of contact hours that the students could be involved in some kind of activity too um, that's true of stagecraft too you have additional contact hours that maybe you can embed some of the stuff you're wanting to do within these other courses um, I'm just giving you some options there's the makeup course it has 96 contact hours as the max you don't have to um, deliver instruction for 96 hours but you can um, use those 96 hours to help you out in some ways um, acting one 96 contact hours uh, I haven't looked recently at how many contact hours institutions are using uh, but you do have that flexibility and and community colleges are funded kind of based on their contact hours universities are funded on uh, semester credit hour that may if if you wanted to build this in the community college instructors would have a, a way to get funded if they were building their courses this way so um, that was the academic cooperative question what was the other question about getting um, a new course Rebecca this is the, the the database that you provided me the information about the, mm -hmm. the offerings does it make sense that the academic cooperative isn't on there at all does, does that mean nobody's offering it oh because it's so customized it's it's not really something that they look at on a regular basis we can get that information but because you're, you're, it's not same learning outcomes it's so customized to the student we don't um, look at the enrollments on that but we can get those numbers uh, the other the other question is uh, I know that that these advisory committees field of study advisory committees can create academic or recommend the creation of academic common market academic common. I'm sorry I'm frazzled uh, <laughs> committees like this can recommend new ACGM courses if we put them in the field of study but what if we put them in the field of study as one of several options for example this committee is thinking about requiring six semester credit hours of writing intensive courses am I right six hours mm -hmm. the options for that would be either introduction to theater would be history of the theater one history of theater two or a new course which many of us feel is important and belongs to the lower division in script analysis but we'd have to create a new ACGM course in script analysis but would would we have the authority to create a new course if our field of study course is only an option and not a flat flat out requirement uh, there are some challenges to that um, when you when it's if the committee recommends it to be added but it's just a choice I think enrollments may be a, a, an issue I'm just wondering since we're just talking about script analysis I'm assuming that if we move to the performance track everyone would have that as a required course 
I would speak, I would think script analysis is available for all, is, is a mandatory for all three tracks that we're talking about. Yeah, Generalist. it might be that, that we say script analysis and one of these other three options would be the way to go about, to get around, to get to that point that, that she's saying. But also realize that that is embedded in some of these other courses. Script analysis in, is in act, acting one and acting two. So if it's not to the extent. Right, not to the extent. Because I think, I think what most of us do is if we don't have a script analysis, we're teaching it in multiple classes. Whereas if we had a script analysis, we could really get into the nuts and bolts of it. And then in a directing class, you know this, here it is for directing. And here it is what, how you take what this knowledge is for design or for acting. If, if I'm, yes. So. And is that usually taught at the upper or lower division at We'd, universities? We would want it, it's both, I think. Some places teach it upper, some teach it lower, but I think we would probably want it lower since it's a foundational and a prereq to what, possibly a prereq to what some of the upper classes that would utilize it would be. If my, I'm seeing nods, yes, Andrew. Yeah, we have to be careful because we also have a minimum number of upper level hours we have to offer. So when we start changing some of these things around in some of our degree programs, it's gonna start influencing that minimum number too. Yeah. Yeah, I, I yeah but that. for the schools that have it as a lower level, existing, yeah, which is, which is seven universities have it as a lower level. Um, if, if it's not required uh, in, in the field of study, then they're not getting it at all unless they move it to an upper level. So do we have any more questions or that she can, clar that she can clarify for us? Uh, Rebecca, the committee voted a few minutes ago to recommend revising the course descriptions in the ACGM for Stagecraft 1 and Stagecraft 2. Right now, they're very general, um, and uh, the committee would like to see some specificity about what exactly is offered in 1 and what exactly is offered in 2. Uh, do you anticipate any difficulties with that? No. I mean, that's what we do in the learning outcomes. We look at um, what's being offered at the level of a, a, a syllabus. We collect syllabi, and um, the work group will look at that and can embed more specificity if that's where you want to go. It would be helpful if there were some specific topics that this group thought needed to be there. Just give us a word and we'll run with it or, or a topic and we can we can kind of research guide our research in that direction um, but that's what the purpose of those committees are to, to really dig out okay um, information could you, could you give the committee a sense of a broad timeline on what the learning objectives committee for drama might be we usually do this in the summer, but I think it's going to be an, a year-round kind of project that is just continuing. Okay. Uh, we would, we would um, try to get to it as, um, you know, practical. Okay. Any other questions or comments for Rebecca? Okay. okay, thank, thank you, you, Rebecca. We really appreciate this. Thanks. Okay, so that begs the question, I guess, in our writing intensive area, um, uh, we'd already agreed on there being six hours there. Should three of those hours have to be script analysis and then three of those hours be a selection from a menu? So moved. Okay. We're not voting yet, so. <laughs> but it, can, uh, it looks like that's a cons I see a lot of nods on that idea in theory. Yes? Great. The, the choices, the remaining choices being theater and, history one, theater history two. And, in, and intro, I think, was part of that, right? Isn't that where some of you all said? Yes? That's the one with the writing, uh, the writing uh, right. outcomes, learning outcomes for. Richard? Specify writing. I have a. a question about uh, about this is there 
is there a way that we can construct the field of study to say, yes, theater history one and two are part of this, but be it noted that many universities are not going to accept this as their theater history course or variations on the theme? I think I think that would happen at each school. I know like at Angelo State, ours is a 4,000 level and students that take it at a, at a 2,000 level cannot, it doesn't count at our school because Precisely. We, we can't. So what, I, what I'm suggesting is that a student at, uh, at a two-year college be advised not to take that to fulfill the requirement because they're going to have to take it again. Unless they're going to UT Austin. Well, I mean, but. yeah, but I mean that in many cases, probably more than not. Sure. Um, I, I, you know, is, is I, that a mechanism that we can even contemplate? I, I don't think so. Okay. I think we have to, I, I'll listen to you and then I'll, then I'll speak. So. Well, I think in some ways that you, I mean, we advise our students depending on where they want to transfer to. So I would never tell a student that was transferring to Stephen F. Austin, you better take that history course. I would tell them to take the intro course in that case. I mean, and I think that we all at the two-year colleges advise our students depending on where they want to transfer to. I try to get them the maximum benefit out of their community college experience as soon as they know where they want to go. So I think in some, there's some level of this where the universities kind of have to trust us to do that uh, at our level. If, that, if this is the way we're headed, then, then we're going to have to be responsible for, for advising them based on what your uh, what you really want your students at your school to get one uh, it may not work for you for your school um, but the field of study these courses map to other courses and so let's say you had lower level intro theater history classes can we turn off the cameras for a second on your books but are never offered um, then these courses would map to those credits and then there would be upper level theater histories that were untouched by the field of study. I'm a cheater right. and a thief. Yeah, and I think, you know, like, again, I can only speak for my school. We wouldn't, I don't think we would add these into our curriculum, but we, if someone, if a student came in and having taken it, it would map to what we would have the equivalent of in our, which would be the intro and probably the script writing. So if they came in with, with a history of theater one at a, at a two-year school, we would just say, okay, that, that check box is the intro and you don't have to take intro now. So I think that, that I think that's kind of the point behind all of this anyways. Yeah, Dan. Don't forget intro to cinema. In this and intro to cinema, yes, sorry. Because that's, that's further down the list and I keep yeah, messing it. For those so 2366. of us who don't teach theater history as a 200, because this one also then double dips into core. Right, so, so that menu of options would be so we're, are, are we, we're in agreement that script analysis is three of the writing on its own, and then the other three comes from 1310 Intro to Theater, tw I'm probably gonna say these out of order, 2366 Intro to Cinema, 2361 History of Theater One, 2362 History of Theater Two. Yes, Peter? Is there any way we can just do the first three instead of all five? I just leave the histories out of it. I think that there seems to be a fairly large dissemination there. But if it said we're taking six hours out of nine, that would be nine, am I right? Am I adding that right? An intro to theater, intro to cinema, or and script writing, we could take six of those nine? I don't six know. out of, out of by, those three by my classes. count, it's five counting the script analysis, it would be five classes. Right, out of five, so we need six classes then. Right. Um, Andrew, did you have something? I would also want to leave the theater histories out because we're, we're teaching them on an upper level. Just to point out there on the chart, you see, uh, especially history of theater too, it's a rarely offered course. It's only offered at six colleges uh, and offered at six universities. Uh, theater one is only offered at five universities, although it's slightly more popular at colleges at 12, but that's pretty low considering, I mean, can look at, you know, acting two, which is taught at 62 colleges. History of theater two is just taught at six. So, um, 
that's uh, if we put that in. I mean, if we put it in the field of study, it would be good to be an option because there are just not going to be many colleges that are going to be able to even make that an option for their students. Although uh, it, the enrollments and the offering will probably go up if it's included as an option in the field of study. But right now, that's uh, that's a very rarely offered class. Listen. I think that theater history one should be an option because we just heard from Charlotte that. UT wants their students to have that as a lower level course, and there's going to be, you know, those few others. We transfer students to UT uh, from our school, so I want them to have that option that they will take theater history with us so they're not running behind when they get to the upper level theater history at UT. I mean, it doesn't mean that I'll send all of our students through that one, but the ones that are transferring to schools that want it as a lower level, they should have an option to get it. Richard, I'm I'm a little bit confused about why theater history one seems to be more popular than theater history two, given the fact that they are not that they are not sequential in the sense of two being more advanced than one, but they're divided chronologically. I would think that more students and more programs would be interested in. The history of the modern theater then would necessarily be interested in the Greeks and Shakespeare. But perhaps the reason is how many people have theater history one in the core under something like humanities. You know, because if they're offering that as a humanities core class, it has nothing to do really with theater. It's a core class in the humanities. And that's that's how come it's more popular than theater history two because you only need to offer three hours in the humanities. So I'm wondering how much of that number is based on core rather than theater. That's right, and that's a, these numbers are not the most up to date, I don't think. Um, yeah, time. and in a few years, we're going to see History of Theater two jump because of the core, because of, of A&M's choice to drop intro to theater from their core. And um, and keep history too. Okay, so let's stick a pin in this for a minute. So we have a menu of available options for design. A uh, Michael, sure, I'll sure. Go ahead. Just yep. to follow up on that, just because while it came up, I I have some data. I didn't copy it for you because it came in after I sent you your package of how many institutions offer what course in the core. Um, history of theater one is offered in the core at just three universities. Um, and History of Theater two is offered at just two universities, A&M and UT, uh, as part of their core. So it's not a widely offered core uh, option, um, at least for the universities. So probably so. I'm sorry to interrupt. Go ahead. Sure, no problem. Um, so we have a tentative menu for the writing part. We have a tentative menu for the design. Let's create a tentative menu for the acting. We, we were all in agreement on 1351. So what would the menu of options for the acting, the other acting be? 1352, 1322, 2336 voice? I'm, I'm sorry. Oh, we didn't finish design? Oh, I wrote down 1330, 2331, 1341, and the possible intro to design course. Oh, I, I thought it, oh, I wrote down the wrong number. 1342 is costume, my bad. But are we also including 1341 makeup? I think, yeah, makeup is one of those that it's a weird one that I think well, probably everybody needs to take it in my opinion, and I don't know where you would lump that. I mean, it's a, you can count it as a design, you could talk to it, you know, as creating character, and so yeah, 1341, we need to stick in there. Um, and then, so let's, let's, let's create a quick menu of acting and then take a break and let it kind of gel for a minute since we're almost at two hours. So we have 1351, 1352, 1322, 2336, that's voice. Are there any others that would be in a menu for acting? And it may be that we do the same thing. Everyone has to take 1351, and then you pick 
three of those others, three hours from the others. Is that something like that sound palatable? So for the acting, the six, the six hours in the acting portion of this, they ever they would have to take thirteen fifty one, and then pick one of the next three classes, thirteen fifty two, thirteen twenty two, twenty three thirty six, something like that. Is that does that, does that make sense, Andrew? So they take acting one, and then they have to pick between acting two, voice, or movement. I just included all of them in one, so I, I had staged movement, makeup, acting one, acting two, voice for the actor. We're talking about the general. Back to general. Yeah, I'm we haven't. Sorry. Yeah, we haven't gone that I far apologize. yet. We haven't gone that far yet. So, uh, in theory, that's kind of where we're sitting right now. It's nine fifty. So let's let's think about that, and let's take a ten, and stretch and chit chat with people, and come back at ten. Does that work? Perfect. All right.
tricky possible. Okay, thank you all. Um, we'll, we'll reconvene. Uh, I'd like to introduce our Assistant Commissioner um, for Academic Quality and Workforce, Rex Peebles, um, who is here and can answer some general questions about uh, the field of study. Uh, in particular, uh, I called him down because I wanted to make sure Charlotte's question was addressed because it's, it's an essential one about the Sachs letter and about uh, institutions um, having difficulty with having a very different lower division level curriculum than what's in the <coughs> field of study. Rex may also be able to to give an opinion or two about new ACGM courses, especially if they're offered as options in a field of study as part of a menu of courses rather than required. So, um, Rex, that microphone wasn't working earlier. If it's if it's not working now, you can take my seat if you like. Well, let's see. I oh. think it is working. Excellent. Thank you. You just have to know all the buttons to push. So, uh, I'll move over there. So what's the first question? Uh, Charlotte, can you repeat your, your question that you gave to me? There have been so many. Um, I guess the, the one of the, the, the question that uh, I asked that Alan uh, said he would invite someone in to help us think through is the question, well, the first question was about the Sachs letter sent to the coordinating board about accreditation um, and its relationship to the fields of study requirement and how uh, and how the coordinating board is responding and what changes might happen because of that letter okay uh, so yes so we've seen the letter and I've been working on a response to the letter I don't at this point I would not anticipate any changes as a result the letter I don't know how many you've actually seen the letter uh, but it was an inquiry about the field of study work and uh, and about uh, I guess concerns raised by one or more faculty members um, about the the principal in Saxon. I forget which one it is since they've renumbered, you know, since they reconfigured everything last year uh, about uh, faculty control of curriculum and that kind of thing. So the the response that that I'm working on is going to primarily consist of, uh, first of all, pointing out that the statute that's been there since the early 2000s, I mean, it's now about, the, the statute authorizing the coordinating board to create fields of study is about 15 years old now, maybe 16, something like that. And most people think it's sort of brand new because when it first came out, the, the coordinating board, if, as I understand this correctly, I wouldn't hear then, but uh, did 10 fields of study and then just sort of let it go with that. Uh, and so they have been, they've been forgotten over the years to a great extent, even though we have t uh, several of them that are still, at least in terms of statute and legality of them are still legal and students can still use them and institutions still have to recognize them. Uh, to my knowledge, this is the first time a question has come up about them. So, but anyway, so we'll outline the, you know, the statute and, and the, the sort of activities of late and what have you. Let me finish and then I'll take whatever questions you might have. Uh, and then, but mostly it'll revolve around the fact that uh, acknowledging that, yes, there is that principle in, in uh, Sachs criteria, uh, but the field of study committees were designed to have faculty do the work, which is why y'all are here. Uh, and I will probably also point out that while in Texas this is brand new, uh, in a lot of ways, this is a real, this is a real cultural shift for Texas. Uh, I mean, Texas has a long, long history, 100 plus years of every institution doing whatever it wanted to do, which is not necessarily a bad thing. Uh, until you get to the point where 75% of your students who get a, a degree have hours from somewhere else, and 35% of all students who get a degree have more than 30 hours from a community college and so forth. So, I mean, we all know that the transfer and the swirling of students has just grown over the years, 
and it's not abated. It keeps getting more and more all the time, and that's driven by all kinds of things having to do with cost and location and all kinds of stuff. Uh, and time to, uh, time to degree, our non-traditional students, what we, have, what we have dubbed non-traditional students for a long, long time now are actually our traditional students. Uh, our, what we have dubbed traditional students are actually the outliers now. They're very much in a minority in terms of students in the state of Texas. And so, and I think the other important, and so this is a real cultural change to go from, in effect, every institution doing what it wants to do and to a place where it's done much more on, a, a, you know, a, a system-wide, statewide basis. And there are other states that have done this kind of work already, and they've done it on a statewide basis. They have the, they have the luxury, I suppose, of every school in those states are in one system. Um, unlike Texas has 61 systems of higher education, and there's nobody in the country that approaches that. I mean, even California only has three systems. Uh, a lot of states only have one. And so a lot of states, in, including states within the Sachs uh, region, have done this kind of work, but they don't, it doesn't actually fall under the aegis of a state agency in a way because it's, it's a, they have a statewide system. Uh, and so, so that, I mean, so the response will point out those kind of things, and then we'll see what the, the response from Sachs is about this. But, you know, but they're doing their due diligence, and, and we'll do ours in response. So, question. Yeah. I wasn't trying to be snarky, but. Well, that's okay. Yeah. The first part of what you said, you're talking about a statute. I don't know what that is. And can you, if you were, if I was the SACS coordinating, if, no, if I was SACS and you were sending your response to me, what would your opening intro paragraph be in the simplest of terms? Well, I'm not sure about that yet. <laughs> I, don't, I don't write the intro and in the, in the conclusion until I've done the rest of it. Uh, you know, but I think my intro would actually be, uh, in all likelihood, will be uh, to say something about the state's efforts to uh, deal with transfer problems. And that the, the field of study, uh, Texas has developed over the years two mechanisms for trying to deal with transfer issues. And one of them is core curriculum and the other is field of study. And so I think I would start actually from, from that view rather than some other place. I wouldn't start with the statute, if that's what you're saying. Okay. Yeah. And then I would go on to say, and this stuff, you know, is, is this and this and this, so. But. Any other and questions? So, but you did comments? say you hadn't seen the statute. <laughs> I just... Because I, was, I think I think we give it to you in one of the slides when the at the opening of these no, meetings. No, I get that. I get that. Um, I thought I thought Charlotte's question was really simple, <laughs> and I didn't understand the first part of what you were saying. So oh, okay. It was Sorry. just a little. Polit it, you sounded like a politician. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> and I was trying to get to the core of what you were saying, and I couldn't get there. So thank Sorry. you. Now, all of my degrees are in political science, <laughs> so maybe there's, but, but, but I typically, I don't, I don't really like care for politics that much, and so, <laughs> so I'll try to watch that in the future. Thank you. Uh, first of all, thank you for coming down and talking to us. Um, I'm still struggling because it seems to me there are certain contradictory arguments. On the one hand, we're told that this will move the state forward in terms of graduation rates, but on the other hand, people will say, oh, it doesn't affect that many students, so don't worry about it. Um, I don't think there's ever been a moment in history where uniformity and pitching towards the lowest common denominator have created excellence. So uh, I'm really, really concerned that we are saying to, to institutions, four-year institutions, you have to take whatever that content was, and you have no uh, right or no out when you, when, uh, to argue in any way that these don't meet your standards. Um, and I don't, I think there's a lot of goodwill in the room in terms of 
uh, our investment in our students, whether we're at a two or a four year uh, college. I don't think there's any daylight between any of us in terms of wanting our students to both have the best possible educational experience when they're at, when they're at our institutions, as well as the best, the most success they can achieve in the field after they leave our institutions. But if we are saying that um, the, the 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 accepting institutions have no way to um, um, make any changes or, or say, well, we don't, you know, we, we have a course in the lower division that's not in the FOS, so now you don't have to take that course or have that knowledge. That does not seem to me about ensuring student success. Um, so I'm, I'm worried that this is just about graduation numbers and not about ensuring that our students are successful, right, in terms of content. Uh, so I'm deeply, deeply concerned about that. Uh, I also um, am concerned that um, um, we, are, we are looking at uh, a structure that doesn't take advantage of um, expanding knowledge about the field and reactions to the field. So that we, for example, the course that's described as the intro to theater course is not a course that UT has taught in almost 10 years, UT Austin, excuse me, has taught in 10 years because it doesn't reflect the field. But if that ends up in the field of study, we would have to take that, even though we know through our research that it doesn't reflect the field as that curriculum is stated. So it's a very frustrating experience, and I'm not sure it's one that benefits our students. Um, so it's just, it seems to me that uh, we're not really looking at the, the most important thing, right, which is our students having success once they've completed their degrees. And also this, the argument about excess credits isn't based on verifiable data. Since you don't have access to transcripts, you can't know for sure that that's exactly what's happening. So that also concerns me that if we're going to take this ginormous step of a top-down regulation of curriculum, which is in contrary to the history of curriculum, to statements by all the uh, policy of all the accrediting bodies, we're not even doing it based on actual research that's verifiable. So where's the data? And if the data is FERPA protected, then how do we do the research in such a way that we can make sure that the choices we're making here have the most positive impact on our students now and in the future? So I guess those are my, my concerns. Um, well, I, so well, let me try to address some of your concerns. So I, I think you start with the idea of the lowest common denominator, and I, I don't, I'm not sure in this context at all what that means, because the idea behind this, I mean, and you're right, this was, this was originally conceived of as a transfer mechanism, which the, the, and the legislature does take the notion of excess hours very seriously because it's costly to the state, it's costly to students, it's costly to the folks who are paying those students tuition and fees into the tens of millions of dollars per year. So they they tend to come at it from that from that angle, uh, and I and I do think that's an important. You know, if we are concerned about students, then we do need we do also need to be concerned about uh, their ability to move through the system and move to uh, graduation and a job uh, as seamlessly as we possibly can. Now, on on the other hand, I mean, I, I think it's important to note that the part of what the and, and I think really the most important part of what a field of study committee should be doing is not just, and I'm not, sure, and again, I'm not sure what you mean by, by the lowest common denominator in this sense, but I do think you should be asking the question of what is it that lower division students need to be successfully at the upper division level? And if the field has changed, then as a group, you need to collectively decide to change those courses then. That's, I, that makes perfect sense. Uh, these things are never designed to be static. They are designed to be static for a period of time. Most institutions give students the ability to graduate under any catalog they can come in under, at least within a five-year time period, even if the curriculum changes within that five years. Uh, and so we sort of envision something like that 
with these that they would be reviewed automatically every five years, even sooner if the field requests that that uh, that we do so, that we look at it again. So, uh, you know, and again, I mean, I I think that whether it serves students programmatically or not, in in terms of what is necessary for that division, for that discipline rather, and for students to be successful is something that that y'all need to weigh on and if and if there's a course that is not a part of the current discipline then you know then this committee can decide that that course should not be a part of the field of study if there are new courses that need to be developed to reflect that discipline then that's a recommendation that this committee can make uh, so now, oh, and let me just address the data. So what we do know is, and, and you're right, this is pretty sketchy, I'll be the first to admit it. And we're trying to, we're, we're doing our best to get more. There's actually a, um, someone from UT Austin, uh, a researcher in the School of Education, who's looking at this issue right now and trying to tease out some uh, things about FOS and core curriculum. Part of the problem with a lot of the data is that uh, the cohorts people look at go way back you know and part of what we you know you don't you don't know what you don't know and it's hard to say something is not going to work until you've actually done it now you can speculate a lot beforehand but you don't know until after it's been done so part of what we're looking at is how are we going to very carefully track this going forward uh, you know, institutions really under state law now, it's difficult for an institution to deny credit for someone who transfers in courses. Uh, and that's been the case for probably 50 years or more. And so, but you can always, if an institution really feels like some other institution's course is not up to par, then that's something that the other institution needs to know about. That's probably something that we need to know about. And it's through committees like this that we hope to make sure that the at least the minimum, if not raising the bar even higher in, in terms of what students need to know and the competencies and skills and knowledge they need to be to demonstrate are, are built into those courses. Uh, but, but we're working on the but we're working on the data piece of it. Uh, and you know, if it's somewhere down the line we find that all of this is terribly ineffective and accomplishes nothing, then I'll be the first to say so and recommend repeal of all of it. But the fact that that, that student, I mean, what we do know is that when students have a clear path laid out for them, they generally have less hours and less time to degree. I think that's a well-established fact and there's a lot of national research on this. And I think that the fact that a lot of other states have already done this kind of work, uh, some of have, have done it for a number of years and have done it with some with good results. Uh, and we, we can tease that out in some and, and uh, try to bring more of that forward. So, okay. and, um, and I was just going to make the comment, and Charlotte, I, you probably will agree on this. When they capped the hours at 120, they did not take into consideration that the fine arts probably need more than 120 hours in order to make our field relevant, to be on top of what we do. And that is something that we should have, and if we want to, we need to come back and fight that and say that there shouldn't be a cap at 120 hours, that education and broadening should be open to all. I mean, I graduated back in 1978, and I graduated with 182 hours for my bachelor's. I double majored, and I took every theater class there was because I wanted to learn. And we are, by capping at 120 hours, I think that we have done a self a disservice to the youth and the future of this country, and that's just my opinion. So in that regard, I would, I would remind everybody that, that you can, uh, Degree programs can seek an exemption to the 120 hours. And I would, I, I forget what the numbers are, but I think probably close to a third of all the bachelor's degrees offered in Texas now exceed 120 hours. We, 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 I mean, we encourage people to stick to the 120 where possible. And we look very closely when someone says we need more than that. But there are 
But clearly there are justifications for having more than 120 hours. And if, and if that's something that, that the field itself really feels strongly about, then I think it's something that we can always talk about. And, you know, and I'm, you know, and, and I, I say I, because that, that kind of stuff, those approvals and so forth typically end at my desk. Um, so, but, but I'm certainly op open to looking at those kind of issues and where there's a legitimate need in terms of preparing students in that field, then if we, you know, if you need to go over 120, you need to go over 120. Any other questions or comments for Mr. Peebles? Yeah, I'm going to leave if you don't ask, so. Yeah, or are we prepared to move on to the actual stated purpose of this meeting? Okay. <laughs> or back to it, yes. All right. And, 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 I, and I'll be glad to come back down if you have any other questions, sure. by the way. So, uh, but before I leave, I, you know, I recognize this, this is difficult work. And it, it really does require institutions and folks to think in a, in a way uh, that they're not typically, you know, that we've never asked them to think of in a way before. And that's hard. You know, I'm getting, I'm getting old, and uh, it, well, I shouldn't have said that because I graduated in the same year you did, and uh, from, I think I got, <laughs> so, um, oh, and, and I took longer to get there than, well, I did some time in the military before I went back to college, so that accounts for that, so I'll blame it on that, okay, but, uh, and this is, this is hard work. And, and, and I recognize that. And, you know, I've told people before that I think, you know, if we can get through a couple of iterations of this, then at some point, you know, it, like everything else in this life, at some point people will think it was always done that way. But it is. But in the meantime, it's, it's very difficult work. And uh, I, I appreciate all of you being here and, uh, and devoting your time and, and attention to this. And the questions that you raise are good questions uh, because it's, it's stuff that we need to, that y'all need to think through and that we need to think through as well as we go through this. So, um, thank you. All right, thank you. And, and I'll be glad to come back down, Alan, if I need to. Just follow up. Okay, so we were, before we took the break, we were at six hours for the BA field of study, generalist is still where we're at. Six hours in acting, six hours in design tech, six hours in writing, four hours of practicum, yes? And the menu options that we had for acting were 1351, 1352, 1322, 36. Um, Kevin suggested also adding the makeup into that as an option, just, just bear with me. Thir the design was 1330, 2331, 1341, 1342, or a new course in intro to design. So six of those hours, six hours in writing being the script analysis, new class, and a choice from the existing 1310, 2366, 2361, 2362, and then four hours of practicum or the two academic co-op, two hour classes creating an 11, a 1289 version. That's kind of where we're sitting, yes? Um, on the makeup, I think makeup is that outlier that um, could maybe slot into a few of them. I'm seeing some yeses, I'm seeing some noes. Um, where, where would we, how would we take care of makeup then? Yes. Makeup's not a performance class. And if we're saying they need six hours of performance, that's three hours of performance and three hours of makeup. Okay. So it's fair. Doesn't fit there. Uh, is makeup a class that we think every undergraduate major should take yes so then what what we would have to do is find three hours somewhere to make it the same as script analysis everybody takes this where would where would you guys propose doing that without going up to 25 because <laughs> I don't can think. I just hear I'm just curious the rationale for why makeup is why the answer was yes I just want to hear Someone want to answer that? I mean, I, I can answer it. If I would just, generally, I would just say that it fits in all of the areas as far as if you're going to be an educator, 
eventually you're going to have to put makeup on, you know, if you do UIL, uh, things of that nature. If you're uh, an actor, obviously, um, you should learn to do your own makeup. And uh, another design, of course, I think it's a more of a design element, uh, practical application of makeup. Um, so I just think that it fits in all three areas. Uh, I just think that's something because, you know, usually there's not a lot of people. Practically, it's like, well, there's no one else to put your makeup on, learn to do it yourself. That's really the only reason I have. It's fall, it's a fall semester. Andrew? I, I think practicality does come into play. If I were uh, directing productions in the, in the two-year college, then I would hope that my students would know how to put on the makeup, you know? Yes. And I, I disagree with that because I, I, I think that it should be a design option. I think that it's more important for our students to learn basic stagecraft than makeup. Makeup seems like, you know, something they could take as an option at university if they don't get it at our level. Is the question perhaps that, like, I'm trying to think of, I understand uh, building the skill, but we're talking about a three credit course, you know, a full semester three hours a week of makeup, is that, is there enough content there to fill a three credit oh, course? Oh, easily. Some, some places have six hours of it, so. Well, yes, I agree that, you know, as far as stagecraft goes, the two are, it, it's an option for design, but it shouldn't uh, replace either acting or any design course, right? I mean, it is its own hybrid, or I say that's not, oh, that's not the right word, but it is its own thing, you know, I don't know that it really fits into any other thing. Certainly we couldn't put it under the writing uh, option, right? I was just going to say that maybe with the general tract, as much as I agree that we need the six hours of writing intensive, um, I know our students are still going to have to take, you know, English 1301 at least, uh, and those kind of things. And for this general tract, is it more important to do script analysis, makeup, Stagecraft, then pick one, acting, pick one, and do four practicums for this general tract. And That's maybe not maybe maybe not have the six hours of the writing, although I totally agree with that, but it's like if we've got to, you know, split the baby. Yeah, you're right. I mean, they are already going to get writing in other, uh, in that, those first two years of school. But not writing in the discipline. But not writing within the discipline except for that one script analysis class. Okay, so the, but I'm, starting I'm not sure that the general studies theater appreciation class really counts as writing in the discipline either. I'm not sure that it really counts as All right. writing. So Andrew and then Karen. Education. Writing, isn't writing involved in your intro to theater courses though? Yes. yes. It's in the learning outcomes. It's, it's mandated by the learning outcomes. You, you, are, you have to make your students write in the discipline in intro. Yeah. Karen? Well, I was just going to su suggest that perhaps the two technicals that the generalists take is stagecraft, and they take the makeup class and not the intro to costume class. Because, the, because someone who's doing makeup may not want to be doing costume whatsoever. Someone who's going to be doing lighting may not. I mean, when we get down to the tech classes, they have a choice of either intro to costume or makeup, perhaps, or if we have a technical design. Because a lighting guy is not going to go, a lighting girl, person, excuse me, is not going to be actually going in to do makeup. I can tell you now, my lighting boy is never going to touch uh, makeup. So that's, that's just a thought. Sure. Um, let's do a let's do a straw poll vote on should makeup be required by every student in the generalist track. Let's just I'm just curious to see where we're at. So if you think makeup should be in the generalist track for every student, raise your hand. So it's, it's in the minority of that. So then as a menu option, it sounds like is what it should should live and, and live within the design tech, if I'm hearing that correctly. Yes? Uh, 
Yeah. So I think that it could be in design tech or performance. Um, no, 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 no. I'm talking about the categories within general. Yeah. Um, and I don't know if there is there enough support for that. We have one not support, but no. It should all be movement. Okay. All right. Let me ask you this then. All right. I'm, I'm going to throw. I'm going to throw a curveball. What if we said you take everybody and and we get rid of the other field of study um, categories that we were talking about yesterday? What if we said that the BA field of study is 1351, 1330, the script analysis, four practicum, and enough of those other classes to get up to 22. I'm just, I'm just throwing it out. That would be acting one, stagecraft one, um, script analysis, four practicum, and enough of the other things to get up to 22. Three, three hours, yeah, nine hours. And then we don't have to worry about the other tracks and we can say, hey, we're done. I'm just, I mean, I'm just throwing it out as a, as a point of conversation. Yeah, Dan and then uh, Melissa. Well, and this way then the student would be responsible for, for crafting their own track. Because if they were technical, they would take their three hour, three extra classes tech. If they're acting, they'd take them in acting. If they're wanting to be a generalist, which should be the goal of everyone, I think, being a generalist, then they could split it up. And so I think maybe this would then give right. us that or if they're going to UT Austin, balanced field of study. If they're going to UT Austin, they can take the two histories, or if they're going to James, they could take the two history writing classes. I mean, it, it does open up other worms of if students are going into a BA with a design emphasis or a performance emphasis, so maybe getting rid of those other two tracks may not be the best, but maybe for the generalists, this is the way to go. Melissa, you had a, a comment? Well, I just, I mean, it would require really, really uh, careful advising on our part, which of course I think we do, but uh, just to make sure that they're not enrolling themselves in what they perceive as the fun courses rather than sure. the writing courses, uh, you know, that's, the, that's my only concern. And those courses making. Right. I mean, we would have to figure, each institution would have to figure out how that generalist would map. And that, that may be problematic, and so maybe that's not a right solution. But I mean, in theory, I think it sounds pretty cool. I, I think worrying too much about how this maps for each, each institution is uh, a Pandora's box. I mean, it, we're, it, it's really clear. All of us are going to have an awful lot of homework <laughs> in right. figuring out how to make this map for us and work for us, whether we're junior colleges or four-year. And it's not great news for any of us, but I think it's... I, Hopefully it's clear to us all by now that we, we all got a lot of homework to do when we get home on, on trying to make this work and it's not going away. So worrying too much about how this maps for each one of us individually uh, is gonna bring us to a screeching halt. Right, yeah, Melissa. I do have one more question though, just to clarify. This does not mean in any way that we have to offer all of these no. courses. No. We offer what we can at our yes. school as long as it adds up to 22. a field of study. Right. Yeah. Did you have a, yes. I also um, just wanted to put out there that the intro, the histories and the, and the um, cinema could also be covered by that creative arts core requirement if we needed to like, just, I don't know, just remind ourselves that we have that option too, that we don't necessarily have to put it in the field of study in order for them to take it, that they would still have an opportunity to take it in the core. Okay, yeah, Richard. That's not necessarily true. Not every university has the same core. They have the same categories, but not the same courses in the core. Right, except that if a student transfers in core complete, then they're core complete and you can't make them take something else. Like if a student took um, super duper biology one somewhere else and we don't offer that but they came in core complete, we have to count that towards that 0, 0, 0600 or 0, 060 or whatever science is. That makes sense? 
if their core complete, we can't tell them that your science doesn't count for our science. We have to take their science no matter where it, it came from, if, if they are core complete. Uh, yeah, Richard, and then we'll come back over here, and then we'll come back over here, and then move forward. I, I am concerned about the very idea of students loading up on lower division core with courses in their particular subdiscipline. Um, we are a generalist program. Every one of our students takes two movement takes beginning acting, two movement courses, theater speech, three uh, tech courses, uh, all of which are prerequisite to upper division courses. I don't want to see someone in directing class who has taken one acting class and that's it. I don't want to see someone in a uh, design, upper division design class who has taken stagecraft and nothing else. Uh, I really do think that we need to have the, uh, that division, the the tracks the, the the 666 that we've been talking about um because i i i do think that it is important that actors know what design tech people do and vice versa uh and i think a single course to my mind a single course in those areas is not enough it would be fine if what we're talking about is we are going to accept these courses we're not talking about that. We're going to, we're saying we have to accept all of these courses as a core and you can't require anything else at the lower division. That becomes problematic and I, sure. and I, I think that's why I would, I would uh, argue against right. um, the, 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 the freedom that you're talking about. Gotcha. That make, that's, a, that's a good point. So. So maybe that's not a good idea. I don't know. Um, Peter has something. I'm sorry, Peter. Go ahead. And on that, by that same nature, with the idea of six 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 in the uh, extra um, three to four hours free, would that be one class better? Would that? Do you think that would work any better, or instead it of giving six hours? Better. Yeah, it would be better, right? It, it would, would be, still be. I mean, yeah. the idea is that we have. Trying to think, one, two, we have eight hours mm -hmm. in our core that are not going to appear. Yeah, one way or another, we've got eight hours in our core that are not going to appear in the field of study. Right, that's problematic. Mm -hmm. um, but at least w in having two design tech courses and two acting slash voice slash movement courses instead of one, mm -hmm. we're getting a little bit more balance into the, into the curriculum and in fact insisting on it rather than allowing it. Right. So in that case, it would be the same thing Michael had said, uh, instead of two classes for freedom, uh, one course. So it would be what, 18 then instead of 22 or 21? I'm sorry, say that again. I was uh, it was basically the same idea you had, except ex instead of two classes free to take whatever you want, it would only be one. Uh, from, we'd still have the three or the six in, in performance, six in design, and six in writing with one or. The practicum. Well, the four or the other four? Okay. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. So I mean, it may be that we, we have, we keep the, the tracks also to, to compensate for some of that and say that the generalist is the, the sixes. I was saying that maybe one are, course free might give us right. a little bit of leeway where everybody can find some wiggling room. Right. Yeah, so I was just trying to see maybe there's sure. a way in between those two. Hypothetically, there might be if, if, we, if we include script analysis then I think we would be fine with nothing else in that category for the reasons that several people have mentioned. And so it could be 663 and then a, a three and an, and an elective for the third. Yeah. I mean, what do we, what do we think about that? So 663, a three elective and a four practicum. I mean, what are the feelings on something like that for generalist 
Yeah. With the menu options being what I read earlier with makeup being in the design one. Right? Yeah. Do you want me to read that out again? We're stealing an hour from the right. We're stealing, stealing an course, hour, a course, a course, three, three hours, a course from writing um, as a required writing course and turning that into an elective of which writing uh, the writing courses would be on that menu, but also would be in a design courses and performance movement courses. I think that menu would be pretty much anything in the ACGM, right, for that elective? If I'm hearing that right, sure. Yeah, that they can, that they can offer. Yeah, or it would, or it would. If like we don't offer intro to cinema, but if that was one of the writing options and they came in with that as a writing option, we would say yeah, checkbox. So, all right. So let, let's let's. Yeah. Yes. Intro to design. So let, I'll read these out again. So for the generalists, we're talking. Six hours in performance, which would be 1351, and if I'm hearing you correctly, and a choice from the next three, right? So acting one, everyone's doing, then they're picking one of the next three. 1352, 1322, 2336. That's, that's one of those. That's, yeah, 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 I'm sorry if I raced through it. So that we're, 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 yes, I'm just checking. All right, the design would be, 1330, and now are we saying everyone takes that and one of the next menus, right? Is that what we're saying? And 2331, 1341, 1342, or the creation of the intro, the, the intro to design course that we would like created. Yes? So far? Party on. All right. Writing is the script analysis course that we would like to create. And then the other three hours is an elective from the ACGM and then four hours of practicum or the co-op, which um, Yanis Yesenia um, is prompting for. Yes, Melissa. Now I'm concerned about the co-op after the way she described it. I am too, and I talked, I talked with her about it. And so I think for her situation, and there may be a, a handful of other schools that use it um, from, the, from the chart I think there may be one or two other schools. Um, the way she uses it, I think I think we run up the flagpole as we want to add the thousand level of it. And if they kick it, and at the same time, she's going back to her dean saying, we may not be doing this course as we should. And can you talk to like people like Kevin and some of the other schools and how they count practicum in load so that if it comes back and they say, no, we're not going to do that and you're doing it wrong, you have to use practicum, she at least We've tried to uh, accommodate what her and some other schools may be doing, and then she's trying to get it, get practicum in at her end. Right? Did I sum up our conversation right? Absolutely, that's yeah. correct. So, I mean, are we good with that? Yeah. All right. Uh, all right, here we go. Can I have a motion to accept that as so a... So moved. All right. <laughs> and a second. So, Alan, do you, do you need uh, us to read that back? Well, okay. So, for the writing, the writing section, you're not going to require the practicums? Uh, the practicums are a choice? No, 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 no. So the writing section is only the new script analysis. And then we have a three-hour elective that they can pick from any of the ACGM. And then everybody, and then the four, hour, uh, four hours of practicum or the two um, co-ops, two two-hour co-ops. Okay. Michael. Is it a problem we, that we're requiring a class that doesn't exist? Part they said we can make new classes, so we're going to make, we're talking about making three at this point, script analysis, which doesn't exist, uh, intro to design, which doesn't exist, and the one, the thousand level, two hour version of, of the co-op is what we are, those are the three we've been so, talking about. Okay, so then the, Michael? Uh, and it required four hours of practice. I got you. Okay. So either uh, they're either going to get four hours of practicum or no. two. Sp it's right here. So they take um, six hours of performance, six hours of design tech, three hours of writing, four hours of practicum, and three hours of an elective. And that's 22. 
Oh, okay. So you're not really talking about a design category then? We're not, we're not to that point yet. We're still just on the generalist. Okay. But what, I mean, my point is that, that if you make a choice between either the four hours of practicum or the two semester Crower credit co-op courses, yes. yeah, then one option is going to have two semester credit hours less than the other option. No. We would have to create. So, so you're creating so this a one new. Exists. Are you creating a new four-hour academic cooperative? No, a two-hour. No. It'd be twelve eighty-nine. Would be it'd be this, but with a one instead of a two there. So you're creating a new academic part, academic cooperative part one. Yes, and renaming this one part two. Okay. Just like the practicums are one, two, three, four. Okay. Um, okay. Um, Run it up the poll and see what sticks, uh, I guess. So. Yeah. Um, um, uh, I'm I, sorry, go ahead, and then we'll come back to you. Um, this is such a complicated motion. I've been trying to write as we go. And I know some of Is there a way we could, since we have the screens to a computer, that someone could just put it in, I don't care what kind of document, so we could see it on the screens? Because. Sure. I mean, is, that, is there a way to do that? Uh, I know I'm smart, but. I can email you what I have typed up thus far. But I just want to make sure we're all yeah. seeing the same document. Agreed. Thanks, Alan. Yeah, chalkboard would be equally as as useful. Okay, so this would be the BA generalist field of study. And I'll, I'll, I'll read off what I have, and then you tell me if I'm right. So in the, it would be 1351, uh, acting one, all right, new line, a choice of acting two, uh, stage movement, a uh, voice for the theater. All right, new big time bullet over there. So, inner shift tab. Shift tab, shift tab, there we go. All right, um, 1330, uh, I'm sorry, stagecraft one. And then, Choice of uh, where's twenty three thirty one stagecraft two makeup intro to costume sorry I'm going too fast and uh, new course intro to design. And then the other bullet, all right. Um, script analysis, new course. And then three hours of an elective from any of the remaining ACGM courses. And then four hours of practicum practical one through four, I guess you could say, or the co-op options that we just talked about. Yeah, sorry, um, choose one. Yeah. Uh, tentatively numbered 1289 academic co-op one and 2289 academic co-op. Yeah, that's what we're talking about. I think you take that SCH out of there and then we're golden. Right, am I, am I right? Yeah, I would just specify the choice of elective three SEH. It's any three 
DRAM classes not already taken. Yeah, not practicum. And it's not um, right. Yeah. Any three hour DRAM ACGM course not taken in another category. Could I suggest that we exclude acting three from that list? Oh, I, th I think we should, I think it should vote be. to remove acting three from the ACGM. Let's make that another movement, but yeah. I, yeah, yeah, another motion. All right, so this, does this look right? This is what we've been talking about, right? Oh, really? Okay. Beauty. All right, so this is, this is the motion before us to accept this as the generalist track in the BA only FOS. Uh, the motion's on the floor. It has been seconded. Any further discussion? Oh, it went away. Okay, there we go. <laughs> um, all right. If you're voting yes, you're voting for this. If you say no, you're voting against this. And uh, we will vote. So if you are in favor of this, please raise your hand. I count 21, is that correct? Opposed? One, abstain? Zero, so this passes. Wow, we have an hour and five minutes left. Whoop. All right, so 21 to one to zero. Okay, great, so let's, let's now, let's, uh, I think what would be best is if, for the, let's talk about the performance and design. If we were to keep this, if you can keep that up there, um, what would you take away from that and put back in for a performance version of this and then what would you take away from the generalist and put back in as a design version and it, it may be as simple as saying the acting one somehow ends up at 12 hours instead of whatever it was six hours or something and the design ones uh, you, you get what I'm saying so let's talk about let's talk about the perf performance one theater theatrical performance is the name we came up with yesterday, so theatrical performance. I would move that we put the acting part of it to nine. To nine? So you would essentially just take, would you take that elective out and put it as, At, they would have two acting electives? Yeah, one less, one less, uh, one less tech, and then take the elective out. And so that would make it, that would take it up to 12 then. Oh no, what? I'm sorry, nine, yeah, you're right, you're right. What about just taking the choice of stagecraft makeup, intro to the costume and all that, out of the, or yeah, out of the performance track and then just requiring two stage movement and voice for theater? And you that still have take to take it to stagecraft. 12. That would take it to 12. So you're saying acting one, acting two, stage movement, voice for theater, stagecraft one, script yeah. analysis, practicum is what you're saying. That's 18 plus four, right? Or you could put makeup there as pick two out of that list right there. Stage movement voice and makeup. makeup. And, and then you have the three hours you could put. And then we, yeah, and then we take the choice under stagecraft out, right? So Choice under stagecraft completely away. I have, a, I have a philosophical question on that that I don't maybe want to ask, but I'm going to anyways. Why are we saying Stagecraft One is more important than intro to costume or lighting or something like that? Because, I mean, I can make the argument that I, an actor would I'm benefit just as idea. much from taking costuming as the I, other. I, I, like I said, I'm a generalist. I don't sure. really think we need tracks to begin with. Sure. <laughs> yeah, Karen. I think Stagecraft One is more important for an actor to take because they darn well need to know to get out of the way. They need to know to stand there. <laughs> they need to know to stand there during a tech rehearsal, and I, that's why I think it's important they take Stagecraft because then they understand that they shouldn't be jumping on something, that they shouldn't be jumping on and break it after we've spent all the time. Okay. Uh, Y'all all know where okay. I'm going. All right, fair enough. Uh, Alan, I think you can take Choice of Dram Elective out of this also, if, I, if I'm adding, if my math is right here. 
3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18. So. I ask one. Yes, sure, James. I'm curious if we should consider uh, requiring stage movement and making a uh, choice of one between makeup and voice for theater. It seems to me that if we're talking about theatrical performance, stage movement's pretty essential, the center of our art. I, uh, and Ellen, if we could call it theatrical performance, not performance. Yeah, I defer to the, the acting profess uh, acting teachers in here, so yes, uh, Andrew. I, I would say that uh, voice, voice is equally as important. Okay. Yes, Richard, and then I'll come back to you. I'm a little concerned about specifically requiring acting two at the expense of stage movement and voice. Our acting two is at the upper division. Um, so that, that the, the idea of it being, uh, being an elective doesn't bother me as much as specifically requiring it. So you're saying acting one, stage movement, voice for theater, and then pick one, makeup or acting two? Hypothetically, or... or or saying acting one and, and choose three of the other. Um, acting one and pick three of the remaining four performance-based classes well, and makeup. How does that, I mean, yes, Andrew? <laughs> I think if it's a performance track, you gotta have at least two acting courses. Okay. Well, but those, those acting courses are going to happen, I mean, in the same way that uh, in the same way that a lot of uh, MFA acting programs don't want students who have been overloaded at the undergraduate level with acting courses because they want to do the training. I think we at the four-year level might want to do some of the training and to have, uh, <coughs> you know, <coughs> if they come in, if an, if an actor comes in with acting one, acting two, stage movement, and voice, that's essentially our entire curriculum. We've got one acting course, be, uh, well, we've got, we've got two acting courses beyond that. We've got an advanced theater speech and, a, and an advanced acting, but that's it. Um, so I'm a, little tr I'm a little troubled by the idea of having all of these courses at the, um, at the lower division with not a whole lot left for the four-year college to provide. Uh, okay, Deb, you had a comment? No? no? Karen? Well, I believe perhaps acting too could um, go away from the lower division level, that they do need stage movement, they have to have voice, and they need acting one as the fundamentals of acting so they know how to score a script and then put makeup in there as part of the performance track, included with stage craft. Yes, Melissa. It, it would make more sense to me to replace stagecraft with makeup than to replace acting with makeup. Bill? So if, according to this, you have the acting one, could we move acting two down to the choice of two? And, and make you'd it a still have nine hours of acting. And make it a choice of three? Yeah. Um, so you'd have nine hours. Here we can you'd do get whatever to pick we from here, those, so, yeah. Yeah. So Peter. it would be more required for the performance. It would be three. It would be yeah, a choice classes. of three, Alan. Yeah. On that, I think. And yeah, yeah I mean, in, in that case, certainly. But then I, I would think that makeup would need to move out of that because obviously there's no voice acting or movement in makeup so much as. So go back to choice of two, and makeup would be its own line. Maybe. Yeah, I, I just <laughs> I just don't want someone to come and say, yeah, well, I don't have to take acting or voice because I've taken makeup. Uh, so, a, you know, I took makeup, I, I don't need to learn how to speak. So I'm going to be a mime, okay? <laughs> yes, I'm going to be a mime. Come on. <laughs> In that case, they're, they're good to go. I agree with you 100%. <laughs> so something like this, how does this shape up? <laughs> I do a mean uh, going down a staircase. I will. No, <laughs> I suck at it. So, all right. Well, what do we th do? We want to do we want to are we prepared to vote on this or do we have other discussion? Um, that is somebody do the math real fast. That is 22, right? So can I have a motion to accept this as the um, theatrical performance track BA only? 
Alan, if you could put theatrical in front of performance up there, please, just so we're sure. Motions on the floor. Second. A second. Any further discussion? Uh, so, I mean, by going forward with this, we are accepting the idea that we need three FOS with two specific tracks here because I'd, I mean, that's, I believe, the. Now, your school can decide what they teach, right? Out of those FOSs, because not every school can teach every FOS. We have different tracks, and if this FOS comes our way, we yes. have to accept it. As the lower division. As the lower division courses, courses in your major, yes, that is correct. So, does that mean that if we do not have a performance track, this becomes irrelevant to us? If you do not have a performance, we have a, yes, we have a you, general you would BA, take, yes. and that's all we have, yes. then we don't need to worry about this at all. Well, except that you may have students transferring in with this. And if they transfer in with this, what does that mean? It, sub, it has to map and substitute your lower division courses, right? I don't think that's on. <laughs> Melissa, just point yours over that way. I don't know. I'll have to check on that. That's why I'm not so crazy about tracks, because it introduces this confusion and problem. If, if you don't have a performance track at your institution and a student transfers in with the performance track field of study, can you ignore all of the field of study? I'm not sure. I'm going to have to look into that, but I'm suspecting that the answer would be no, you would still have to accept the field of study that the student comes in right. with because it is the drama field of study. Right. And there's and an, this drama student is entering your drama program. And there's an, there's an inverse to that too. If we only had the generalists for those of us who do have tracks, if they come in as a, right. with and, the generalists but they want to be in the, the performance tracks, they're going to miss some of those lower level. Exactly. And this committee is deciding what how tracks are defined. We've just decided here that we're going to have generalist and performance and technical. But that may not be the way that a university has divided up their program. Um, you know, UNT, I think, for example, has got several different uh, tracks and different names of different tracks and different kinds of things. And just because we've decided today that those are the tracks that we're putting together um, doesn't mean that we're requiring all other institutions to redefine their tracks. So my instinct is to say that if a student has done any of these fields of study, it would transfer to any university's drama program. But I'm going to have to research that a little bit and get back to you on it. That's why all other things being equal, it's so much simpler not to have tracks. It's easier for students and it's easier for receiving institutions. But you can't have tracks if you think it's, uh, if you think that's what students really need to succeed. So let's do Melissa and then James. Because we've kept the general with all of these choices, you can create this theatrical performance track out of the general with the choices. I suspect the same thing will be true of the design and oh, it, it will would just be. be up to us to advise our students to the right track out of a general degree. In, in theory, I agree with that. However, in practice, if you have a freshman come in and depending on, that doesn't know where they want to transfer yet, and then just does the generalist and picks, you know, more acting and then maybe that last semester so they decide I really like the design. Well, I guess, I mean, I can argue against that in my own head right now too, so yes. It's just right. the idea that they can create whatever they want and there's nothing they can take in their freshman year, even before they get to us, that won't apply because we've left it that broad. Any three hour course from the, you know, so they could enroll in something freshman first semester and it's still gonna apply. We just have to catch them after that and advise them. Uh, uh, Andrew, then Karen. I could I just and then Dan? Could, oh, I'm sorry. James was next. My bad, James. Yeah. I just Andrew, wanted to point Karen, out that the conversation Karen. about 
tracks was also linked yesterday to the CIP codes, and we talked about mapping CIP codes directly to the tracks, which would be the decision. So if your program was coded uh, general 500501, and someone came in with the other track, they're, they're coded 500506 for acting. Right, that's an excellent point. So Thank that you. Would I figured out the that would be how you got out. That's where it kind of. Sure. That, I, if we good, are. My, sorry, yeah. go ahead, Alan. No, I'm sorry. Oh, no, my only question then is, you know, I want. I think that we need to decide, you know, A, is it helpful for the students, right, to, to map the tracks in these ways, and then B, weighing how helpful it is to Richard's institution, Melissa's institution, right? Uh, uh, I think we can be clear about wh who is obligated in what ways in the work we do here in the next hour, but we should just think So, about Jim, do you think we would have the option to not call it a generalist, but just call it the field of study BA? and track it to all those CIP codes? Yeah, I, I think that that was the, the option that we walked in here with the first, but then that obligates every, so. so every BA. If that is yeah. preferable for Richard to being able to say, uh, you've done the acting one, uh, 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 so that doesn't count for us, you have to take these other classes or for Charlotte's program. And on, I, I'm not sure I'm making myself clear anymore. Uh, does that make sense? It seems to me that there could be some utility in creating tracks to give different institutions leeway uh, in making the field of study work for them when I'm, they receive it, right? Yeah, I think in theory, yes, I would agree with that. So that, that I, I that's think there idea. could be some practical issues, but I think there are going to be practical issues any direction we go yeah. at this point. Andrew, and I'm sorry, Kevin, did Karen. that answer your question? Okay. Andrew, then Karen. How, could, I, could I just see how many two-year colleges have individualized tracks like this in the okay thank you uh, at my school in particular we have uh, a menu of courses and they come in and they tell us what their focus is and then we they take these classes if they're more tech if they take these classes if they're more performance so but uh, honestly it's it's one class Everybody who comes to me, they take the practicums, they take acting one, they take stagecraft, they take makeup, and then they have one option in their area to fit into the AA. Yeah, it's, we don't it's do up it to formally, three options like in ours. Yeah, Karen? I just wanted to point out again that even though I know we talked about this yesterday, that I think it's imperative that we put in what music has about completion of the field of study of curriculum shall not prevent a receiving institution from requiring additional lower division courses needed for specialized programs of a bachelor's degree. So if we go with that wording, then we just keep the generalist and then the, but it, uh, that wording, I mean, it's in the approved for music, but it seems contrary to what the uh, point of a field of study is. The, the way we're putting together fields of study now, that language wouldn't have made it. Uh, we're, we are trying to be much more clear to institutions who are misunderstanding fields of study, are playing pretty fast and loose with them, that we, we mean them not to include additional requirements beyond what's in the field of study. I think music is going to have to be a rare exception here. We haven't even touched the issue, and we're running out of time here, about what to do with BFA programs. Are we going to recommend that there be no field of study at all? Yes. For BFA <laughs> programs? Yes. <laughs> I know. Uh, but that's something that we need to consider. And if that's the case, then, then that might be the best way to handle that, rather than to try to put in a loophole right. into, the, into the rule here which says uh, you can add extra courses if, and then leave it up to institutions to decide whether or not that applies to them. That's unleashing all kinds of cans of worms here. Mm -hmm. I wish music hadn't done that, but they did. And when we revise music, I doubt that language will survive okay. when the music FOS is revised, but we'll see. Dan. Well, yeah, the music ed thing comes into effect in 2018 fall. So that language is in there approved coming into effect now. So the coordinating board apparently dropped the ball because they allowed that after, the, and that's the revision of the music plan because the music field of study has been revised to 2018. There was one before that. So we're saying from this point on, nobody can use that language then. 
Well, I'm not saying that, that, that it was wrong to put that language in there. I'm just saying I doubt that the way we're doing fields of study now, the way that we've been reconsidering it and talking about it internally here at the coordinating board and responding to questions and, and comments and responding to complications. Yeah, because my, my music students yeah. who are leaving my department every four year is taking advantage of that. None of them are innocent. <laughs> okay, uh, because it seems like a little bit of what I feel like sometimes is that we are being thought of as second class, and we're not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Melissa. Yeah, our, our district rep that's that just talked to us about the same thing, that a lot of uh, four years are not honoring the field of study, but it's that language that's allowing them to not honor it as sure. a whole. Okay, so how are we on this performance track B A only theater theatrical performance? Michael, Michael it's question. 20, yes. Sorry, did we? And I, if this sounds ignorant, I apologize. But did we did we hold a vote to agree on three tracks? I think we had a, just a straw poll vote on it. Straw poll. Yeah. I'd, so we never had a motion for this, did we? To I my see knowledge, a few we shaking don't. Heads, no. Allison, did we have a motion? Huh? I don't think we. I think we'd said in theory these are the three, and we would come back. I think that was one of the last things we did last night after we did the 22 hours. We said these are the three that we would contemplate, but we never really. Good, good point, Patrick. So, um, yes. I wonder. I would just like to offer. Maybe we just stick with this one and see what happens in the next five years, and then if it's a total catastrophe, um, reinvestigate it. Um, I'm just wondering if we have these tracks, if it's going to be confusing or, or prohibitive for students. I guess I'd like to say, what can we do for our students that is, that is the very best that we can for the student? And I know that we all have our own different needs from our institutions, but, but how best can we serve the student and, and what is gonna be the thing that does that for the most students. Thank you. Karen. I think we have the opportunity now to do three tracks. We're all sitting here in the room. We took the straw poll yesterday. Let's just put it out there and see, you know, we might as well do it. We're close enough to, we got two of them done. We only have one more to go. So I think we should just go ahead and go for it. Assuming this passes that we have two done. Yeah. Um, in looking at students, I think actually creating the three tracks for us at the two years is actually more beneficial for the students because it does allow them to start moving down a path that most of them have already predetermined. All right, so I guess, yes, Andrew, and then I'm going to talk again. I want to ask the two years if, if having some of these courses as options are going to be a difficulty in terms of having the courses make if they're not not necessarily in in all the tracks I would say for ours because we're not we may not all offer all of them we're gonna pick the ones that are gonna be the best for us um, you know with the if we go to the general one if we can pick stagecraft 2 intro to costume, intro to design and makeup, if they only have to pick one of those, we may say we don't want to offer stagecraft two because we right. want the students to be able to function. I think it's actually going to make our numbers easier and it's going to make um, the students more focused. Yes, yeah, that, um, you, I'm sorry. Just real quick, I guess, I guess my question is, if we make three tracks and our students at a two-year institution take the performance track and then goes to one of your four-year institutions and you say it's invalid, that's, that is my concern. Um, and I definitely think there's a benefit to like getting them on a track, but will it be a limitation when they arrive at your four-year institutions? You say, we don't offer performance tracks, so we're not taking this. That's my only concern. You know, I wonder if institution by institution, we could have a field of study track that is suggested but not required. Right? So we would have, I'm talking just to the two years here. If we just had the one field of study, 
and then our students came and we could say, oh, you're interested in tech? Then here are the, here's the field of study track for you. Although really when they leave, they just have the general field of study. So we're, all, we're just helping narrow down their choices. In which case we'd only need the one generalist not, track and we're consulting with our junior college colleagues to create a path for them. Except that for those of us with BAs with tracks that would limit them going into some of those, that would limit them going into a performance or a design track at the BA. If we just kept with the generalist, yes. But, but what, I mean, what Kevin was saying is exactly what I said. We can create a track for them out of the general. We at ourselves with our students can create this same track sure. out of the general. And that way, if we know already, hey, this kid wants to go into the uh, the acting and directing track at Angelo State, then here's what I suggest you take, and it'll still work in that field of study. Yes. In that yeah, general. To, okay. Yes, you're you're correct. I'm going to say where it's where it would fall apart for me personally, is that like I'm looking at this performance track. And I'm, is, let's assume that the design one is similar to this, where it's acting one, makeup, stagecraft one, and pick two more design classes, right? If it was just the generalist, they would have two performance-based classes where our design students don't take two performance, they just take acting one. And our performance students don't take two stagecrafts, they just take stagecraft one. See what I'm saying? So I mean, it, in theory, yes, I agree with you, but in practicality, I think, I think the, the, for me, the tracks give us the most flexibility and the two-year schools can pick which tracks they can offer. And I mean, it seems to be, if I'm, if I'm hearing that, I mean, maybe I'm not. I mean, we, we don't have a motion on this and if we want to put it to bed, we can just motion it and get on with it. So here is the same as Shannon's though. Yeah, uh, that, yeah. I, I agree. I mean, code, I, I see where you're coming from. Zip code will prevent a uh, for your institution from accepting it. Yeah. Okay, well with that, let's say the general the general SIP code is gonna be 50.0501 drama and dramatic slash theater arts general. My design major BA would be 50.0502 technical theater slash design and technology, right? And so if, if a student came from a school that only offered the general, they're not gonna be getting enough of the design tech maybe i'm talking myself into the corner i don't know but and so then i would say well you don't have enough of the foundational so you got to take these other foundational courses that are out of the field of study that are in this field of study and in essence then we just created the design track right i mean did i is anyone following me or am i lost in my own head mm -hmm. Uh, let me let me do this. I would like to have a motion. I'm going to entertain a motion to create these two tracks, and let's just see where we're at. Then we'll up and down it, and then this is a real vote. And if the body says we don't want to do it, then we're done with this. And if not, if the body says we do want to do it, then we create these and we keep going. But I think I think we can talk in circles, which, which is what we're doing. And if we don't get an actual vote on this, we're going to have some bigger issues in the next 40 minutes. So I will entertain a motion to create the two tracks and then we can yes no vote that yes yeah. i'd like to put forward a motion to vote up or down on the creation of three tracks being generalist performance and design tech correct all right is there a second all right any further discussion all right all right so if you're voting yes you're voting for a generalist, a perform theatrical performance and theatrical design tech. If you're voting no, then you're essentially saying just the one field of study. And abstaining obviously is abstaining. So any other discussion? All right, all those in favor, raise your hand. Four, five, six, seven, eight. So yours is back down. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Against? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Abstaining? One, two, three, four. There you go. Nine, nine, and four. <laughs> Clear as mud, team. <laughs> um, so the motion, uh, I don't. What does Robert Rule say about that? Because I've never had that. To, to talk 
briefly, because we're running close on time here, uh, make a very brief case to get our abstainers off the fence. Say that, I'm sorry, say that again. Uh, well, if we have four abstainers, we've got four tiebreakers, and, and maybe we can take a few more minutes to, to make the case for and against succinctly and try to persuade our four abstainers. Sure. All right, I, I will, let me just say, for in my mind, since we're having options already in generalist, in the generalist track to tailor to the student's individual desires, if we have the options of performance and design tech, it just it broadens the directions that these students can go instead of just limiting them to just a generalist. There will be a, a number of students who just, I mean, we have a third of our students at ASU are general track, but a third of the, well, a third of them are performance and then the design and education are the, are the third. I think, I don't think it hurts us to have those multiple tracks. It only gives people more options. All right, so I'm gonna go Peter and then you and then you and then we'll come back around. I guess the only, uh, my only confusion again was the clarification of the SIP code on each one of these areas that we, uh, I heard a lot of back and forth about the general stuff and I, that's why I was kind of not sure. Did we agree that the SIP code would then separate the design and performance, or did we just say that that's, that's the reason for my abstention? Sure. I, I was a little confused. I, so. I'll, I'll answer that. I think the generalist, if, if we had to assign a SIP code right now, would be 50.0501. The design tech would be 50.0502. The performance one would be 50.0506, because we're really not talking about directing in the, in the right. 1000 and 2000. But I mean, level. would that then limit the the two versus the four to accept or ne or not accept? And you know, I really don't know how that would that, that's the only play reason into I'm it. abstaining because I was not sure about that. So which ones would uh, uh, here that would apply? Oh five to the is uh, so it's oh one, oh two, and oh six. Which my question is, if we have these three, then we if someone on, can only give us the general, then we can go ahead them and, and, and offer the other courses, which is what Melissa, I believe, was, you know, uh, which one of the problem being was that if we have these specialized courses that are just under the general SIP code of 501, then those of us with tracks, which I am one, I have a, a performance and design, how, how's that gonna work out, basically, is, can we deny, can we make them take additional courses? Um, My understanding would be yes. Okay. I mean, but that, that's just my reading of it. I think that's what he was saying, he needed to go further up on the chain for that. So, one, can you restate the, restate the question, I lost you there. Can you if, the if a question? student, comes in with, let's say they come from a two-year school with the 01 um, SIP code, but they want to go into an 02 four-year program, can this four-year yes. program require more lower level classes? I would think so. Because that, that would be the big, uh, the big thing. Yes. I, I like what James was talking about earlier, which I think I said yesterday, I hope I did, uh, about we would need to map, if we have tracks, it would be so helpful to map the tracks to the CIP codes, which is what I'm trying to do here. And, so that, uh, that's what they were suggesting, though, is yep. 01 would be the first track, 02 mm -hmm. would be the second track, and 06 would be the third track. So 02 would be the design the, and the technology track, design track. Okay, what else would fall under design? Uh, so far, nothing. Okay. Yeah, design technology. That'd um, be your stagecraft. Oh, six intro would be piano. performance. Theat theatrical performance. Okay, and would there, what about all these other things here? Would musical theater be performance? Well, we don't um, have a- Yeah, we, we don't, didn't even get that far. <laughs> we don't have a FOS for that, though. I mean, uh, the, gosh, can you- Musical that? theater is another hands-off one. Another BFA. Challenge. I'm assuming there are, this would there be generalist, are right? BAs. The theater, yeah. the literature, history, and criticism. I think we're just saying 01, 02, right, 06. They're just those three. To what? It's just those three. It's not the five. Yeah, 05, I don't think we're going to have in there. So just the three tracks 01, 02, 06. Okay, now, could the technical theater track also be the general track? Like, uh, uh, the, the that's, show, yes, hold on, the, the same SIP code. So the general, the general track would just be the general SIP code. The design track could be the design track 
the design SIP code and the general SIP code? That's, that's the question, yes. And so... Well, practicum is listed under the acting track anyway. <laughs> is it? It's really? in all three. Oh my Isn't gosh! It? No, no. Its okay. number is oh five oh six. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Unbelievable. All right. Uh, that's, <laughs> yes. Yeah. If, if you want to get gray, the SIP codes get us to gray real quick. Okay. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> Melissa. <laughs> uh, I mean, it's. Are you saying that we can map these FOSs to more than one of these SIP codes? Okay, so we could say that our general is a 501, and it is a 505, yeah. and it is a, you know, whatever. That's what I'm trying to get you to do, right, because I want to, yeah. All right. That's what I thought I heard. All right, so I'm going to, uh, since that last vote was inconclusive, we're going to keep the, yes, Patrick, I'm sorry. Yeah, I mean, my, my fear with getting, depending too much on these SIP codes is at least the way that they've worked at my institution is that uh, they're going to look at 50.05, and stop. So we can create three tracks, but as soon as an academic advisor handling a transfer student sees 50.05, they will accept, and that's it. So we can go through the hassle of creating three FOS emphases, but where the rubber hits the road is going to be with advisors accepting transfers, and they're gonna see 50.05, and they won't look any further, or if they do look further, they're going to say, well, we don't have that, so it's 5005. Or, gee, that doesn't quite work, let's make it 5005, and that's it. That may so, be something that you have to deal with with well, your advising. I, I, I know, like, at, again, at least at my institution, the advisors, especially when they're coming out of the college level, yeah. have an awful lot of power in accepting what comes in and what doesn't come in. And I, you know, I, I think we're splitting hairs here that are when it comes to the actual practice are, are, are just gonna just gonna blow up in our faces okay so the last vote was inconclusive on the three tracks um, just to be safe and I'm, I'm not sure where Robert's rules takes us on this I'll entertain a motion of the same thing <laughs> to just yes Melissa one more question sure. for Alan um, so we could take our general degree that we that we already came up with here and we could map it to 501, 502, 506, 507, 599, all of those things that are are kind of broad and and then I mean it could map to all of those. That's right. Now, of course, in Texas there probably aren't degree programs in many of these things. Like I don't know if any university has got a whole degree program in costume design. Uh, maybe they do. Uh, we, I know we've got some musical theater programs. Um, but these are often tracks within a major. Mm -hmm. uh, and all these, the courses really happen at the upper division. You know, this is where the, re I mean, we're really talking about upper division level distinctions here. So I'm really not so sure it's going to be a problem for uh, if, a, if a student comes in with the tech track and they want to enter into a performance program, I'm not really sure there's going to be a whole lot of difference between the lower division level requirements for those two programs. There may be, but uh, I would hope that the receiving university would accept the field of study that the student came in with. I'm going to have to check and research this a little bit and see to be sure about that. If, if you could toss out a student's entire field of study because you have performance and they came in with tech. I'm, I'm, I'm uncomfortable with that, and I'm, I'm hoping that's not the case, but I'll, I'll have to research that a little bit. Given that, I want to go back to the point that Melissa made earlier, which is that what we have just described as the performance track can be accommodated by the general track. You can take literally, you can take acting one, you can take makeup, you can take two out of movement uh, acting and voice, you can take stagecraft, you can take script analysis, and if you, if you, use, uh, if you use makeup as your, as your second tech course, if you, and if you, take, uh, if you take an acting course as your uh, free elective, we're already there with the generalist line. Sure, you're not if you try to go to the tech, though. 
do, the, do that same equation you just did, but go to tech, you're gonna end up with one less tech class and one more performance class than the model that we're talking about. So um, according to Robert's rules, that last vote did not pass because a tie means that it is over. So we don't, we, that motion is done. I will uh, entertain a motion to re-vote if, if, if there is a motion for that. Karen. I just wanted to make one comment that when looking at this music field of study, when they talk about piano, what if we had language underneath the general list that said, for students wishing to go on a tech track, these are the recommended courses. For students wishing to go on performance track, these could be the recommended courses. And these are just recommendations, and that way we can uh, know which way to guide the tracks. Russ? I would support that or some variation thereof because I know where I'm currently at, some of these courses are not offered, not currently offered in the catalog and in order for the administration to get behind adding those things to make the people coming to these schools uh, trained at the level that they want, I would need something to say that yes, see these are the kinds of courses we need to be offering currently and without the tracks or without the language supporting that, I don't know if we could get that. Peter? And uh, on that same note, I just got a text here from uh, the higher ups there that would, uh, what about courses in the upper division that require prerequisites at the lower division? Yeah. Uh, that's, so I, I think that's a concern around. Yeah, the I didn't so. even think about it till just now. I it's don't in the back of my head, so. I, I had asked Alan that question yesterday and he said, um, not for the field of study transfer people, they won't have that prerequisite. They're excused from that prereq. Deborah. As a non-techie, um, I'm gonna be selfish for the techies for a second, because um, we had talked about adding an intro to design class, which I think would be beneficial for most of our students who would be transferring. However, if we don't have any track that requires that course, are we going to be up against a wall I think we would be course. I think we would be you adding know. adding a course to the ACGM that's not in the field of study except as an option I think right. would probably not go very far and I mean I'm, I'm looking at Alan because I think that's that's yeah he said that a few times so okay so again um, the last motion failed Robert's rule I looked it up Robert's rule says a tie means the motion is lost so if, if we want to revisit this, I, I will accept a motion on the floor to do these three tracks tied to those SIP codes. Is there, yes, Patrick? I move. All right, so the motion is the generalist, the design tech, the theatrical performance tied to those SIP codes that he highlighted, right? Is there a second? Second, any Point further? Point order just to make sure yes. the uh, a motion to reconsider requires both the, uh, the motion and the second to come from people who voted in the majority last time. That sounds like that's probably correct. Um, so you voted against, did you vote for? You voted against, so someone who voted for, uh, so you vote, so you're gonna make the motion? Oh, I'll make the motion that we revisit that vote for okay. those three tracks. Yes. Point of order should, uh, 05 still be highlighted? No, 05 should not be highlighted on there. That way we're just clear on what we're actually dealing yes. with. Yes. So Russ voted in the favor and made the motion to, to, to come back to this. Is there a second from someone who voted? Yeah, Bill. Okay, so a motion and both a second. These, Thank both you. Both of these people voted against the, the motion last time. No, they voted for the motion. No, it has to be. It has to come from someone who voted. Oh, I'm sorry, I misunderstood you. So yeah. we can go back to him voting. Yeah. So he made yeah. the motion this time, and he voted against it. So that's good. So I need a second from someone who voted against. It. There's a second. All right. Thank you. I, you're counting Patrick's and Melissa's second. Yeah, the others. I didn't. I did, was not. Uh, this never happens. So. <laughs> Call us theater, we'll do it the way we want it, right? So, okay, any further discussion? Justin. Yes, sir. Just to note that uh, I see what you're writing there and it is design tech, design and technology. Yes. And uh, that uh, 50.0505 is not one of the. Yeah, we, we're unhighlighting that one there, so. 
No, 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 we're not there. We, we're sticking with those three. Yes? Person making the motion, we're sticking with those three, right? Correct. Okay. Any further discussion? All right, I will call the question. All those in favor of creating these three tracks with those three SIP codes, raise your hand for an aye. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. <laughs> Here we go again. Um, I, I would like to double count that, so please just raise your hand one more time. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay. Uh, all those against, please raise your hand. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And abstaining, one, two, three. So nine, ten to three. So we, someone was persuaded. Actually, a few people were persuaded because you abstained the last time you voted for this time. All right, so that motion does not carry. So we are at the generalist BA only. Yes, correct? Okay, now I would like to entertain a motion to the effect of whatever it was we were talking about. If you go into a specialized degree, yes? I, I, I would think that we should look at the SIP codes and tie it to as many as we can. We think we can, those more general SIP codes, if that's an issue, that we not just take a general and tie it to 01 only. So you're saying we should take oh, the, the generalist we d created and, and tie it to the... Uh, uh, so in theory, in theory we could, well, we, when we voted to approve this, we didn't tie it to any SIP code. So really what we should do is tie this and we could, yes. it could be as easy as saying it ties to anything 50.05 XX. Well, in, musical theater is in there and that's the one we said we'd stay away from, but... Yes. Would we be able to just call it theater field of study and remove the word general? I think we, I think we would go back and do that. Yes, Karen. I would like to uh, submit that we do what I said just a few minutes earlier about including in there for those on a design track. These are the recommended for those on performance. If, if you wish to get your theater general for performance, we recommend these courses. For tech, we recommend these courses because what he said is for us to be able to get introduction to design into our catalogs, we would need to have that in there somewhere that that could be a field of study class. Well, it would have to be a required course, not an optional course. For it to have the most chance of success, I think it would have to be a required, yes. Yes. I'm worried about adding the recommendation language um, because then this as a document from the state, then it's gonna open up a can of worms for students who seek courses that aren't offered at our individual institutions. Because that we would not be able to remove that from the, what the actual field of study document said, if I was correct. Turn your mic on. Right, but if the choice is there, but if the students see a course that Shannon cannot offer at her location because of X, Y, Z, but that is listed as a possible, then now there's a dynamic with the student of, well, why can't I have that course, right? And there may be very valid reasons why that course doesn't happen, right? So, because if we have to go with just one field of study, we can tailor that to our students. I think we know enough how to recommend it, but I hate to put it in an official document to say these courses are what are recommended. Because if we recommend something that can't be offered somewhere, even though that it would be on the official field of study. The state is recommending and not. Right. I think it, I think it undermines what we're doing with our students. I mean, it's, I mean if, if we did that language, I think we would be essentially creating a track without creating a track, which the body has clearly said we don't want the tracks by the narrowest of margins of one. So, um, I, yeah. Can, can I was, uh, if we're only going to have this one, I know that we 
decided on this one, but that was with the possibility of other two tracks. So now if we're just looking at this one, should we move to a 33394 acting stagecraft script analysis, nine electives, four practicums? Yes. Uh, okay. I would say no. <laughs> yeah. All right, so. I would say no, because we need, because if we're going to call it a generalist degree, then. Well, we, we're not, we can't call well, it a generalist anymore. It's just the BA field of study. Right. Whatever we call it. Sure. Uh, someone who does not, who takes the bare minimum of either uh, acting or, or performance uh, or design is really closing themselves out of a lot of options. Right, but I think if I'm, if I'm remembering the, the, the way this conversation went, and Alan can correct me, is that if we, if we have a advanced specialized, if we have a specialized degree, we can require additional courses than what are in the field of study. <laughs> Does that mean a BFA? I, I look at it, I mean, if that's, if that's the language, I think I interpret that as my BA with a design tech emphasis is a specialized, because it is a specialized, it is a non-generalist degree. Yes, that's my assumption. Yes, so if that is the case, I think I would, I would, rec I would, I would prefer that we do what Kevin just said, so. I'm sorry, but that seems to me an argument in the opposite direction, um, that, if well, the argument, the argument to protect it would be to, have, in my mind, would be to have the concentrations. If we don't have the concentrations, the, the tracks, I would like to have three acting, three design, three analysis, nine electives, four practicum, and then the student, you know, if a design, if it's a student that's really interested in design, I think they would take more design. If they come in having taken more acting and come to me and say, I want to be in the design track, I can say, well, you, okay, but you are now going into a specialized degree and you did not take these required courses in the specialized degree. But we don't have tracks and we want our actors to have more, de more design tech and we want our designer, designer technicians to have more acting. Sure. And I, I think it, we're both, and, I think we're coming the, at it the same thing from, a, from the and, same direction. But given the, given the fact that Given the fact that we are that that we're going to be stuck with whatever, uh, you know that that we require. I mean, we require um, ten lower division hours on the design text uh, sure. design text side. And they're not literally get it. every student, <laughs> okay. literally every student. Right. Well, uh, even BFA actors. Okay. Now right. we're being told. Oh well, you've got to you've got to accept as your lower division uh, core these three hours. Right, that that would be correct. So right, so or I mean, yeah. or but the way we are now, you're you're now saying you have to go ten to six because this is this is what we agreed on, and that would be six hours of tech. Yeah, in there, but so. six is better than three. Okay, <laughs> Melissa. What this does is allows us at the two year level to. Uh, advise our students toward your program specifically, toward James's program specifically, towards Charlotte's. If we have this flexibility, we can advise a student to a particular transfer institution. Whereas if it's more prescriptive, then they're going to end up taking it and you're going to get them the way you get them no matter what. This way, I can at least guide them toward you the best, what will work with your curriculum the best. Otherwise, if it's very prescriptive, then they're going to get what they get, and it's going to have to go anywhere. Okay, so we have we have approved this, right? We can make a motion to tie this to all the 050.05 SIP codes. We can, someone can make that motion, which we probably need to do. Someone can make the motion to do something similar to what Kevin said and take it from 66334 to what, uh, what was it, 33394, um, or we can keep talking for 13 minutes and go home and come back in another day. So, I mean, I mean, I don't feel, I don't want to rush the decision because this is a major decision, but those are the facts and the reality of where we're at right now. So, in, unless someone wants to 
speak to something like that, I don't think we need to talk much anymore. So if someone want to make one of those kind of motions, yes, Karen. Make the motion that we accept the three, three, nine, four? Three, 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 nine, four. So three acting, three stagecraft, three script analysis, nine of any other dram, four practicum or the co-ops. Am I, am, is that what you're saying? Correct, the KP. All right, so there's, yeah, that doesn't. So can you copy that? She's got it. So cop, don't make, the, can you copy it into an, this one has passed, but we're wanting to change this. So in case this fails, we need to, this is our come, our fallback to. So this is this is still the field of study, as you said. Yes, but we're about to, the vote. The motion is to change this. Okay. To what? To something else. <laughs> okay. Hold up. Hold up. Acting one. Acting one. Stagecraft one. Stagecraft one. Nine, three classes of choose three of any of the remaining, which would be that choice of DRAM electives, nine SCHs. And then the practicum or the the practicum and co-op stays. Is this this is what you're saying, Karen? Three six nine eighteen twenty two. Yes, this is this is the motion. Is there a second? That is what I'm saying. There's a second. Any discussion? Yes. Can we change the name of it to gen from generalist to just theater 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 field of study B A B A only. Do we want in the same motion, does someone want to make a friendly amendment to tie it to those zip codes or do we want that as a second motion? Second motion, be be beautiful. Oh yeah, because then it could, if this one failed, then we could go back, yeah, you're with me, I'm with you. All right, all right, any other discussion? We are voting to change page up <laughs> this, which we already agreed on, to page down, to this, that is the motion. A vote for is to change to this. A vote no is to keep it at the other, and an abstain essentially is to keep it at the other, so without putting your life on the line in front of your peers, right? <laughs> I'm wearing a helmet next time, man. No, it's not that bad. So, all right, any other discussion? All right. I, all right, so we're clear on what the yes vote is. All right, all those in favor, raise your hand. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. I'm going to double. Well, I don't think I need to double. All right, against. One, two, three, four, five. Abstaining. Seventeen plus seventeen plus five is twenty. Okay, so this is what we have changed this to. So 17 to five. All right, now I will take a motion to tie this. I, uh, I think tying it just say to 50.05 is the best way to go about that. Any 50.05, all right, so can I have a, I will entertain a motion for that. There's a motion. I move that we tie this to any of the 50.05 zip codes. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Motion has been made and seconded. Any discussion? 
seeing none, all right, I will call the, if you are saying yes to this, you're tying that to this, that being what we just voted on. What are the advantages and disadvantages to doing this? Um, I mean, do we need to do it at all? I think we have to tie it to a SIP code. I think that I think that's one of the things the coordinating board wants us to do. Yeah, it's it's just just to keep the record clean about which programs need to accept this field of study. For example, what if somebody has this program? You know, uh, we right. just need to be clear to them that no, this doesn't apply to media management programs. No, this doesn't apply to visual and performing arts. Other, you know, we're just being clear that these are the programs that. Would we, would we want this to tie into 50.1004 theater slash theater arts management? Would this do, I mean, are there undergraduate we arts and men? That's more of an arts and men. this field of study? That's something else? No, okay. So the motion is. Well, I mean, we, we do have a BFA in stage management. Does that fall under? No. We're not right. dealing with BFAs. Just this BA. is BA only. Yes, BA. Okay, I'm good. Okay, <laughs> so the motion has been made and seconded. Any further discussion? Yes. Um, I just want to propose or discuss maybe just connecting it to 01, 02, 06, and maybe 059. I think. And not the whole, I mean, musical theater directing. Yikes. Anyway. Uh, I think I think how that works, <laughs> it's just BA, and I think, I think keeping it, you know, 05 in there, I think, speaks to some of what Jim would want. Right, theater literature, history, and criticism. That's kind of what you do some of that. I mean, I'm still wrapping around what your degree is, but, but if a student came in and wanted to go into a upper level directing emphasis, I don't know how many of those in the BA they are, but this could count towards that, I guess, maybe, so. Whoa. Okay, uh, real quickly, uh, we can go just a little bit over time, but, but not much, we're on borrowed time here. It's important that you're, you're creating two new courses here. So you need to uh, give some direction to the field of study committee of what you want the academic cooperative 1,000 level course to be, what you want the wording to be on the course content of that, and for the script analysis course. We don't have to polish exactly what the description is, but we need to give them some direction on the content and learning objectives of that. So if some people would like to read into the record uh, what the content of the script analysis course would be, let's start with that one. All right, what, somebody look that up and let's do this vote and then we'll, then we'll jump right on that. So somebody be looking that up and, and wordsmithing something very quick. All right, good. And someone, can you, can, uh, Yesenia, can you wordsmith something for the lower level co-op since that's directly affecting you? All right, so let's vote on the SIP code tie-in and then we'll come back to that, what, what Alan just said. That's great. Um, so all those in favor of tying the field of study to these SIP codes as highlighted, uh, 010, 04, 05, 06, 07, 09, 10, 99, in the 50.05, raise your hand for yes. So, uh, opposed, abstain, one. So 21 to 0 to one, so that passed. All right, so now um, let's, does this, the creation of these courses, do we need, does that need to be an official motion or do we just need to read into the record this is what we want? Uh, I think it's pretty clear you've already voted it into the field of study, so I think it's pretty clear you are voting to create those courses. Um, okay, so we just need to read into the record language to guide the, the ACGM team for, let's do script analysis first. Who has, who has something for that, Andrew? Uh, I have an investigation of dramatic structure from the points of view of the director, actor, and designer. Elements of dramatic theory are included. Okay, Karen. Introduction to the crucial practice of reading and understanding plays for production. Focus will be on the script as a blueprint for directors, designers, actors, and other collaborators. Okay, great. Bill. We have a study of dramatic structure and methods of script analysis as a preparation for writing, directing, designing, performing, and criticizing plays. Beautiful, Jim. 
Ours is Introduction in Analyzing Dramatic Structure as Represented in European and American Plays. Focus on the art of the playwright. Cool. Anyone over here have anything to I'm, I'm just coming around the room. So we can live with uh, something from all three of those, some wordsmithing. Does that work for what you need? Oh, that's, that's excellent. Yeah, that's very helpful. Could, could, we're could Bill, you repeat yours? Sure. Uh, a study of dramatic structure and methods of script analysis as a preparation for writing, directing, designing, performing, and criticizing plays. Yeah, so there's, so we have four options to pull from, Melissa, yes? Can I just ask a question? Do those of you at the four-year level, do you call that, that class script analysis or play analysis? I this is called script analysis. Script analysis. I would call it script, yeah. Oh, Ours yeah. is text and performance analysis. Ah. Got to be it's different. Got to Gotta be different. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, for the but academic cooperative course. Um, all right, so yeah, the academic cooperative. What direction can we give the learning objectives committee on that? Oh, we were looking at you. Sorry. Uh, in case you didn't hear that. So for the, for the academic co-op, what? <laughs> Okay, I have an introduction to an instructional program designed to integrate on-campus study with practical hands-on work experience. In conjunction with class seminars, the individual student with instructor guidance will set specific goals and objectives in the study of drama. So an introduction versus the solo student. Well, the, is there any difference between the, the two academic cooperatives? Essentially, are you saying we want the students to take pretty much the same course twice? Yes. I'm or having, are we saying that there is a substantive difference between you, you will do this in this class and then next semester you will do something different? I'm having one be the 1289 be more of an instructor-led or instructor-supported and the 2289 uh, student-driven. So that's the, the difference I'm making. Okay, are Would we all clear acceptable? on that and okay with that? Are we all, did we catch that? Had to be student yeah, that's, learn. yeah, that's tricky, but. Is that too similar? Well, what do you think? I think I heard Rebecca Leslie say, say that, that the co-op is something that is done off campus, and so I think it's just going to come up. One thing it's going to come up with a challenge of making that happen, and then I guess the other kind of thing that I've been uneasy about is it's going to kind of reveal that we don't understand what a, what the co-op is as a as a as an advisory committee um, and what it does. So I'm a concern that it kind of calls into question our understanding of what that is by putting it in the field of study. So is it uh, the the readings of the four practicums? What are the how are those differentiated? For those of who are on that committee, they're not. Whoever has their HCGM handy, how are those differentiated? It is not different at all. It's not different at all. So could we, in theory, Back take the same for all four? Could we, in theory, take the description from 2289 and apply it to, to a new class in the thousand level and just say there it is, yeah, Melissa? The issue is not with the description. I, it's with the idea. I that agree. It's not the same thing as practical. Right, and we we've talked. She and I have talked talked about this on the break, and because of their situation, that we would like to add the the, the thousand level of it knowing that it may full well get shot down upstairs uh, up the pole at the same time she's going to go at, to her administration and say according to the coordinating board we're not necessarily doing this correctly and maybe we need to revisit ha and have practicum offered at your campus right that's what yeah correct um, yeah. i think what the co-op does is it provides that real world experience right. option um, especially with an arts organization within the community um, that is off campus aside from working yeah. on the shows, which you can do too, but yeah. just to have another option. So it might be that we just copy, copy paste 2289 and make a 1289 academic co-op one, academic co-op two, okay. and then, I mean, are we, in, uh, yes? Yeah, Karen, we're really close on time. I had a real time. quick question. So time. the introduction to design is not going to be considered as ma being made a class? I thought we had three we were talking about, not just that two. That one, uh, since it's, since it's an, and part of a menu, the feeling, my understanding of the feeling is that something that's part of the menu and not a requirement would be harder to get into the ACGM. Now that, we could recommend to add that 
I think we should add it and just see, I mean, if it doesn't get in there, it doesn't get in there, but we might as well add it as a choice for those of you who have that tech track at your okay. four-year colleges. Someone make a motion to add it then. I make a motion to add it. So the motion is to add introduction to design and as of one of the menu options under the design areas in the ACGM. Is there a second? Okay, any discussion? All right, so let's vote yes. Raise your hand. One, two, three, one, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 30, 40, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 19 against. Dose two, abstain. Okay, so someone real fast read that into the into the record. What an intro to design course would possibly be? Yes, I have one. Um, fundamentals of design elements, theory and practice as applied to costumes, scenic properties, lighting, and sound design. Bill. Ours is called Elements of Theatrical Design. It says, Introduction to the Elements, Principles, and Techniques of Design for Contemporary Performing Arts, including the design and practice of scenery, lighting, costume, and sound. Okay, any others wanna, those both sound like they cover it pretty well. Um, okay, so, uh, you have another one to read in or? I, I found one, it says, uh, introduce the theater and non-theater student to the basic elements of theater design and drawing for the theater. The student should be, a, and then it goes into learning outcomes. Great, all right, so Alan, we, what do we do next? <laughs> uh, Defer to you, okay, so. so. This is this is the way it stands? Yeah. Okay, you're creating the new, okay. Yes. Well, all right, that's helpful for the field of study committees. Uh, we have to do two quick things before we leave. Uh, one is the next agenda item is I need to tell you about the 30-day public comment period. I'll write this up uh, into the format that it goes into, and then we will send it out with a memo to all CAOs, CIOs, university presidents, coordinating board liaisons for a public comment period for 30 days. I will send it to you as well so that you can forward it to your colleagues, forward it to your sister institutions in your system, in your community college district. Try to promote this, try to get buy-in, uh, try to, to get people to respond to this because the more comments we get, the better sense we have of how this is gonna go down across the state. It's vastly preferable that we get responses by department instead of by individual because rather than getting flooded with 50 comments from 50 people, it's much more helpful if we can get this brought forward to your next department meeting at your home institution where this comes up and you get a sense collectively of the department and your department chair can write us a response to this from the department as a whole. Sometimes deans like to do that as well. So I'll get that to you soon. What will happen is then when we get the public comments, I'll write them all up into a single document uh, if there's a manageable number of them and it's not too controversial, I'll put it in the form of a yes or no vote. Do you accept this recommendation, yes or no? If it's very complicated and things are very controversial and the temperature seems pretty high about this, uh, with consultation with our two co-chairs and with folks here at the coordinating board, we may ask you to come back to Austin and we'll have another meeting to discuss the public comments and perhaps make a major revision to the field of study. So we'll see how that goes. Uh, the other last agenda item uh, is to approve, uh, to authorize our two co-chairs to make some decisions on your behalf because of Texas public meeting laws. Anytime uh, a motion is made and a vote is cast and discussion is had on things, it has to be an open public meeting, which means we either have to all be online at the same time, we have to advertise it in the Texas Register, we have to have a place for the public to come and sit and speak to us, all that. So in order to avoid that for, my, for things like approving the minutes, which is pretty mundane stuff, or making minor changes to the wording of something, uh, I would like for someone to make a motion for you to authorize our two co-chairs to make decisions relating to the approval of the field of study and the board approval process and the approval of the minutes to delegate our two co-chairs to make that decision on behalf of the committee. So moved. I make the motion that we authorize our two co-chairs to do everything you just said and more. <laughs> All right, so I have a motion. Is there a second? Second. second. Any discussion? Thank you, Deborah. 
any discussion? Uh, so uh, all in favor, raise your hand. Thank you. That makes it a lot easier. All, all of course, send you a draft right, of the great. minutes so for your passes. comments and edits. Uh, no. Uh, and Kevin and I abstained because it was about edits us. Edits to so. the minutes, and then I'll get that revised version to be approved. Then, of course, I'll send you all a copy. I have one quick question. Yes. Do we need to make a motion that says we recommend that no field of study be created for BFAs? I think that'd be a good idea to get that in the room. Yes. yes. So I move that we as a committee recommend no field of study for BFA programs. Second. <laughs> <laughs> and any discussion? All in favor, raise your hand. All opposed? Abstain? So that's a unanimous, well, Charlotte's not here, so 21 to 0 to 1, I guess is how that would go. Do most of your transfer students come yeah. into your BA programs or your BFA programs? It's hard for them to transfer into BFAs. I mean, it's not impossible, but it's hard. I see. So we're not talking about a large number of transfer students in BFA programs? Yeah. Okay. Uh, are, are there a large number of students, transfer students coming into BFA programs? Yeah, it's not a lot, so. All right, have okay. we covered everything we need to cover, Alan? Barely, thank you. I appreciate you all staying late. I appreciate your energy and your patience and your focus and your expertise on all of this. Uh, this has uh, been exciting and uh, I think it's gonna make a huge impact. So we will see what the public comments say. I can't wait to see. Uh, for those of you going to, just so y'all know, for those of you going to TTA this week in Dallas, there is a section, uh, a meeting where we are discussing this. Excellent. So that we'll, I'm sure we'll have a lot of comments there that we can field back to you. If you are not coming, uh, we are planning on doing it like a Zoom or a YouTube Live or something where if you're not going to TTA and you want to listen to those comments, uh, I will send that link. We'll figure it out and send that link out. I, I think that meeting might be Friday. I don't really know, but it's it's sometime in That's the next great. couple I of days. So. Uh, field of study makes a really good 20 minute conference paper uh, because you can talk about what we did here and what the field of study is, try to get the word out to faculty who don't quite understand what the field of study is and isn't and that yes, they have to accept it and it's law. Uh, and so we appreciate your, your anything you can do to help talk about that. Quite often lower division courses don't get much attention. You know, all the, the, the oxygen in the room goes to the graduate courses or the upper division level courses and lower division requirements are often seen as like they've always been there, they'll always be there, you know. Uh, but, you know, it's important now with the field of study yeah. to, to maybe take a fresh look at what this is doing for drama students across the state. So we encourage uh, you to collaborate on that. So, great. Thank you all. Have a very safe trip. All right, we are adjourned. Sure. Thank you. Appreciate your time. On behalf of everybody at the coordinating board, we really do appreciate it. Thank you. Oh, yeah, your expense reports. It's a good idea just to forward, save that for your own records and then forward it to me later because you may spend a couple of hours looking over the public comments, and I'd like to have that in there as included as well. So uh, don't forget, but I'll send you a reminder about the expense report. Thanks, and thank you to everybody in the booth for staying late. Appreciate it.